Sam Kozar. I'm taking you 450 dead center. You better watch out. Cam, P.O.'s can't hit. Cam Caminetti, I love you, man, but I'm going to have to test this green monster off of you, man. Omar, you better hope you're not pitching, because if you are, I'm going to take you deep, bro. Casey, if I'm pitching, I'm going to sword you. I'm looking forward to facing Lou Papano again, and I bet you he won't give me a curveball again. Jacob Kendall, I'm going to buckle you again with my curveball. West Coast, you don't have a chance. The reason East Coast is better than the West is because we got better pitching. Bro, West Coast got the better hitters, and then you guys got pitchers, but like, hey, the hitters, we got you guys. East is better than the West because we got some dogs. Oh, oh, oh. I feel like that was awkward. In beautiful Fort Myers, Florida, it's the winter home of the Boston Red Sox. It's Perfect Game Select Festival at the 14U age group and inside of this beautiful ballpark, the finest. 14 U players in the land going toe to toe perfect game with a major league alumni of nearly 1,700 players. Hi there, folks, and welcome back to the ballpark. We love this game every year. This is the sixth time it's been played. This is Charles Johnson twice. He was a first-round draft pick. He's a world champion. David ronsley has been scouting for three decades. Perfect Games Vice President of Player Personnel. My name is Darren Sutton. Thanks for hanging out with us. Charles, you were talented. They watched you at 14. When you've looked at these last couple of days with these athletes, does it take you back to when you were young, and how special is this for these young men? I tell you, this is an amazing experience to watch these young men compete on the field um, as, at, at an age of being 14 years old. I can remember being 14 years old, and, and the one way I've had a chance to really see some other players is that you wait for the, the old Baseball American magazine to come in the mail or <laughs> something like that. You try to figure out what other guys are doing, but what a stage these young kids can be on. To be here and see your competition uh, right next to you, playing against your competition, knowing around the country what you need to work on and things you know you need to get better at. Good stuff. You love the bats. I mean, you're crazy about the bats. I'm going to give you a couple I'd love for you to talk about. Connor Griffin's out of Mississippi, and then a young man out of Arkansas, Slade Caldwell. You like the fact that they're different kinds of guys. Oh, yeah, this is the yin and yang of the hitters in this class, Darren, and it is a great group of hitters. Connor Griffin is sort of the alpha athlete of this class, 6'3", 180 pounds, right-handed hitter. It's so much bat speed. It's such great extension. There's so much power there. It's it's just as nice a swing and a nice as body as you're going to see on a 14-year-old athlete. Then on the other flip side of the coin, the Yang, you have 5'7", Slade Caldwell from Arkansas, one of the highest performing players in this class, wins tournament most valuable players, always produces sort of like all the good things about Lenny Dykstra and that, that strong, young, powerful body with the quick twitch muscles. Excited about this. By the way, this game in its first five years has already produced 17 draft picks. You can think of names like Jordan Lawler and Brady House that were first-round picks this year already with the rich history. And by the way, this group, this age group, they're not shy about giving it a little bit to one another. Enjoy the game. Here they go. It's going to be a blowout. I'm going to say... Probably 10 to 1. A blowout? No way. West, there's no way you are beating the East. You know how we do in the West. It's game time, baby. It's game time. It's game time. It's game time. Hey, I'm on who got you? It's game time. You said on three. One, two, three. You said on three. One, two, three. West side. West side.
The Perfect Game Select Festival on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players. Rawlings, the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball. By New Balance Baseball, proud partner of the Perfect Game Select Fest. And by Perfect Game Cares, growing the game for America's underserved youth. been an incredible month for perfect game and amateur athletes from the 11u to the 14u age as it pertains to the select festival one of the great baseball storytellers is the fourth member of our broadcast team danny wexelman danny's going to sum up what it's looked like over the last month or so d good to have you with us darren this is our fifth and final select fest of the season and i've been lucky enough to cover four of them and there have been some incredible moments I could tell you about the dazzling defense or how about when the East no hit the West time at the All-American Classic or what about the bloodlines from Sheffield to Sabathia from McGuire to Holiday it's been amazing but what I really wanted to tell you about is the fundraising these young men have done over the last five weeks listen to this the 12U class, they raised almost $35,000. 11U, more than $38,000. At the All-American Classic, they raised more than $112,000. The 14U, these guys you see here on the field, more than $131,000. And the 13U Select Fest class of 2026, last weekend raised a record-breaking $170,212 for Perfect Game Cares and children with pediatric cancer, cancer excuse me, in total, that's almost half a million dollars and if you thought we were done yet tonight we're not guess what we have a few more surprises in store for you darren yeah, excited about that great stuff danny's going to be down with these talented athletes who are they well let's take a time right now to get to know the team in red let's meet the east roster Hi, my name is David Shields. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA, and I'm a left-handed pitcher and an outfielder. Hi, my name is Eddie Zahn. I'm from Sarasota, Florida, and I play middle infield. Hi, my name is Ethan Murray. I'm from Buford, Georgia, and I play shortstop. My name is Omar Serna. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I play catcher. Hi, my name is Braden Booth. I'm from Madison, Alabama, and I'm a pitcher and third baseman. Hi, my name is Noah Sheffield. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I'm a shortstop. Hi, my name is Nolan Traeger. I'm from Spring, Texas, and I'm a catcher. Hi, my name is Nicholas Partridge from Lakeland, Florida. Play third base. Hi, my name is Micah Matthews. I'm from Harrisonburg, Virginia, and I play the outfield. Hi, my name is Jacob Kendall. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and I play shortstop. Hi, my name is Jax Bishop. I'm from Rome, Georgia, and I'm a right-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Sam Cozart. I'm from High Point, North Carolina, and I'm a right-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is John Lash. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm a left-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Aiden Harris. I'm from Melothian, Virginia, and I play third base. My name is Cam Golden. I'm from Buford, Georgia, and I play center field. Hi, my name is Donovan Jeffrey from Chester, Virginia, and I play first base. Hi, I'm Michael Torres. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I play outfield. What's up? I'm Everett Johnson from Youngsville, North Carolina, and I play outfield. Hi, my name is Austin Killingsworth. I'm from Brooks, Georgia, and I play outfield. Hey, my name is Chase Mobley. I'm from Plant City, Florida. I'm a right-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Xavier Rivera. I'm from Cali, Puerto Rico, and I'm a catcher. Hi, my name is Carter Smith. I'm from Cape Coral, Florida, and I play shortstop. Hi, my name is Coy James. I'm from Advance, North Carolina, and I'm a middle infield and right-hand pitcher. Hey, I'm Domain Van from Greensboro, North Carolina, and I play outfield and pitcher. Gentlemen, good to get to know you. We'll know this man soon. Zach Strickland is in the middle of the diamond. He's out of Arcadia, California. Maranatha is his school. He's a 2025 grad, and he dreams about UCLA once he makes his commitment. He is the son of Norma and Adam. Those are his parents. Zach Strickland, David, will go to work against this squad. Scout him up for us, please. Well, Zach, unlike some of the pitchers we'll see later in the game, looks like he might be 14, 6 feet, 150 pounds, so a slender young athlete but with an electric fast right arm. Uh, he's been up to 89 this summer. Um, I saw him at 84, 87 for a couple innings last month. And uh, changeup is probably his second best pitch. 
a theme we developed a lot, the All-American Classic, but these pitchers learning change-ups real early in their career. Gaines national team member Everett Johnson will lead things off. The first pitch is a fastball that dots that inside corner for strike one. Glad to have you with us. We'll do our best to keep an eye on velocity as we go throughout this inning. We'll post the high velocity for each the right and the left arm. And Everett Johnson, one of the most unique players, as he gets that one on the fist, pops it up. I was about to say, he hit 506 this year. This summer in WWBA tournaments, just an amazing barrel control hitter, but the Strickland fastball got him on the fist that time. Yeah, he buried that inside. Cason Cunningham made the play out there at second base. The infield at first base is Cam and Caminetti. Cason Cunningham is at second base. The shortstop is Mason Pike, and at third base is Ethan Holiday. Yes, that Holiday, that great baseball name. Owen won the count out of Miami, Florida. Meet Michael Torres, Mikey as he is known as. He is a Miami commit. And this is a young man who is the son of Luis Torres and Jenny Torres. And fastball so far, D, we're seeing high water mark of about 87 miles an hour. Charles, back in back when you were this age, in the 1980s, what can you did you have any idea of what the velocity fastballs you were facing at 14, 15 years old? I had no idea about velocity back then. Didn't know what was going on. All you know, you was late on the ball at times. <laughs> <laughs> When you look at about Torres, you see, and, and it's fun. They all share who their favorite players were with their bios. And when, when you look at who he is as a player from that left side, mom, a great athlete, played softball. Dad, baseball, and of Cuban descent. So dad grew up in Cuba. As we mentioned, this is a center fielder, D, and a left-handed pitcher as well. And we got to do the 13U Festival broadcast last year for Oklahoma City, and Michael Torres was the most valuable player of that 13U Fest called it an amazing experience he said and I quote I got to meet a lot of new players that have the same love for baseball as I do and love to work hard and battle one another that pitch is high on inside and he earns the walk Torres is on now each pitcher in this game is scheduled I believe to go one inning apiece so we'll get to know 18 different pitchers <laughs> during the course of the next oh, three hours or so Donovan Jeffrey gets the call. Donnie, as he is known, he's out of Chester, Virginia, from that right side of the batter's box. And he will play just about anywhere in the outfield you need him. Otherwise, on the infield, this is a corner infielder. When asked what his dream or desired college was as a non-committee, he said, and I quote, to play at the highest level that my career takes me. We'll figure out the college when it needs to happen. A little bit of an open stance as he lifts that one a mile high to the right side. Cam Caminiti came on in. The catcher behind the plate ended up trying to play that one, played a little bit backwards. Xavier Nyans, the catcher. Yeah, he pretty much um, didn't give him, give himself much room. He um, uh, he didn't he didn't go out in front of home plate to work himself back. He pretty much that ball right at the top of you is probably the tough toughest ball to catch. You notice how we laid out. We were waiting for your thoughts on that <laughs> exactly, one. Exactly. That, yes. That's your wheelhouse, my friend. We were waiting. <laughs> You've been in those shoes before many times. <laughs> yes. To the right side, fouls it back. Quick tutorial for young catchers, Charles, that are watching. How do you make that play? You really have to not panic on a pop-up. You have to really get yourself out in front of a home plate so you can walk back into the ball. That's the key to this force pop-up. Don't panic. Two MVP awards at PG tournaments for this man on the move. Nyans fires down. It's a stolen base, though. Michael Torres grabs the bag. Nyans, you presented him with the power award last night, certainly. A very talented player working behind the plate. Torres with the stolen base one more time. Yes, I tell you, it was a tough pitch um, down and away. Um, pretty much no chance to throw him out, but at, at, at the same time, you know, this kid has a great arm, and sometimes you want to use it and on times when you don't have to use it. Donnie Jeffrey played in Major League Baseball's Hank Aaron Invitational. He says it's a, an experience I'll never, ever forget. And this man with the bat in his hands is an A.B. honor roll student. You know, I had a chance to see that kid over there at the Hank Aaron Invitational, and he, he really impressed me. He was a strong kid over there, and we, we all loved him, and we know his kid has great potential. And he's one of those guys you love to see at the plate when somebody's on base. Zach Strickland on the mound, as we said, the Southern California. That one sinks just a little bit below the strike zone. Two balls and two strikes to count. 
the thing that's impressed me about Jeffrey is he's not looking to pull the ball. His power has been gap to gap. He had a ground batting practice before the game. He had a ground rule double straightaway center field. And that's some impressive juice. Got some help with the pitch up in the zone. A little spinning breaking ball looked like it never got there. But a strikeout is a strikeout when you're seeking outs. And you see Zach Strickland get the swing and miss here. Jacob Kendall now gets the call from the left side. Jacob Kendall from the left side of the batter's box out of St. Augustine, Florida. The player of the year, David. Very talented player as he loads the back leg and goes to work. Line drive base hit. They'll send the runner on around and striking first. Aggressively, the E squad and Kendall backs up all the hardware he has earned. Well, we talked about hitters at the start of the show, and there's no better hitter than this class than Jacob Kendall, the player of the year, ranked sixth overall in this class, and that is so Jacob Kendall with the bat control, the situational hitting. He's got power when he needs it, but this is like a career 470 hitter in lots of volume at PG tournaments. And this is the son of Christy and Jeff out there with that big base hit. Bartram High School, where he is heading into his freshman year. St. Augustine proud. And a beautiful swing and an RBI is Carter Smith. Tall and lean Carter Smith out of Cape Coral, Florida. Plays for the Canes national team. Dreams about LSU should he earn a commitment somewhere. Amber and Dad are his parents. Morgan, his boy, younger sibling, boy. nine years old. Carter Smith at the 13U age group was the player of the year. And this year he was just downgraded, quotation marks, to the defensive player of the year. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we, we will see him on the mound later today, too. So it's a full package of tools. Charles, it's tough when you're a shortstop and you're tall like you. I mean, basically, he's tall like you, but he plays shortstop. It's hard to picture that, isn't it? It's really difficult to picture that. Um, you know, when I was younger, uh, at 12, I played shortstop also. And I was a pitcher, shortstop. But when I turned about 13, 14, I decided catching was my... My, uh, my main position. David, you scouts, and I've read all the great scouting reports you, you have about this young man with the 3.9 GPA, Carter Smith. You talk about his arm defensively. Yeah, it, it, it's one of the strongest arms. You see, he might, he might be touching 90 when he takes the, the mound later, all that. That's not the real thing here because he is a primary shortstop. We don't look for him to be, be uh, you know, play, pitching much in the future. But, uh, you know, there's a chance to hit. Strickland showing that big fastball that whole first inning. Zach Strickland, electric stuff. The young man who idolizes Shohei Otani. He may do. Perfect Games 14 U Select Festival. All right, West Squad, we'd love to get to know you. Take it away. Hi, my name is Boston Kellner. I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I'm a right-handed pitcher. My name is Mason Pike. I'm from Puyallup, Washington, and I'm a shortstop. My name is Luke Papano from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I'm an outfielder and a pitcher. Hi, I'm Noah Malone. I'm from Glendora, California. I pitch and I play outfield. I'm Eli Pitts from Swanee, Georgia. I'm an infielder and outfielder. Hi, my name is Vaughn Necker. I'm from Marietta, California, and I play third base. Hi, my name is Ethan Holiday. I'm from Stillwater, Oklahoma, and I play third base. My name is Cam Caminetti. I'm from Scrass, Arizona, and I play center field. Hi, I'm Austin Choka. I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and I'm a catcher. Hi, my name is Cooper Romo. I'm from Driving Springs, Texas, and I'm a right-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Quentin Young. I'm from Camarillo, California. I play shortstop and third base. Hi, my name is Blake Illich. I'm a 2025 right-handed pitcher from Detroit, Michigan. 
Hi, my name is Casey Cunningham. I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and I'm a shortstop. I'm Noah Franco. I'm from Downey, California. I'm a pitcher. Hi, my name is Eric Parker. I'm from Swanee, Georgia, and I play shortstop. Hi, my name is Zach Strickland. I'm from Arcadia, California, and I'm a right-handed pitcher. My name is Jack Rucker. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I play shortstop. My name is Dean Moss. I'm from Atherton, California. I play outfield. Hey, my name is Connor Griffin. I'm from Florence, Mississippi, and I play center field. My name is Slade Caldwell. I'm from Jonesboro, Arkansas, and I play outfield. Hey, my name is Sean Gamble. I'm from Des Moines, Iowa, and I play shortstop. My name is Xavier Nines. I'm from Mount Vernon, Washington, and I play catcher. I'm Trey Morris. I'm from Fresno, California. I'm a left-handed pitcher. Hi, my name is Cam Nicluet. I'm from Yorba Linda, California, and I pitch and catch. Dealing with that West squad on the mound of Florida State commit. This is Chase Mobley, who last year played in the 13U Select Festival. Canes National, his travel team, Plant City High School. He's out of Plant City, Florida. Just a touch over 15 as he falls within that age bracket. And David, he's six feet five inches tall. And this is what a young pitcher is supposed to look like. 6'5", 190. But even more than the physical build, it's he's so athletic. He's a sub-seven second runner in the 60. He's got big power in his bat, although we won't see him hit today. But the key thing is the pitcher here, he's been up to 91 with a true three-pitch mix. He faces Slade Caldwell, who's out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. David had his eyes on him for the open. This is a young man who's an Ole Miss commit, plays for the Southern California-based travel team, a great team, EPA. Jared Sandler runs that team. Mitchell and Leslie are the parents of Slade Caldwell. What's so impressive about Caldwell as a hitter is how quick twitch his hips are. He was hitting balls in BP as far as the Connor Griffins or, or Donovan Jeffries, um, despite his size. And his hips really, really clear well. Right out of the gates, D. He's up there into the upper 80s. And as you said, Polly will touch 90 as he deals with Caldwell. Caldwell, part of the 13U Select Festival last year as well. Buried that one in too far in. And there's a base runner, so Slade is on a hit batter that time. He's very fortunate for his G form uh, elbow guard right there because that that would have stung. That would have hurt the entire game, right? Good call on the partnership with G form. Yeah, select fest. It got him running the Bubble Boy. Yes. Right there in that now famous Bubble Boy Select Festival logo. Kaysen Cunningham. Kaysen out of San Antonio, Texas. USA Prime National, his travel team. And for the Alamo Drillers when he was younger, his childhood team. As he takes high, 1-0 the count. His dad played at Texas Tech, was an all-Big 12 athlete. Marco, drafted by the Royals in 2000. Four seasons dad played professional baseball. Take it, take it. Runner on the move, fire down from the knees. My wow. goodness, Great throw. what a pretty throw. That's Nolan Traeger behind the play. Yes, that's an outstanding throw. I mean, I was going to tell him to hold it, and he really made that close. Hey, come, come behind him, behind him. Let's go. Yeah, there you go, Charles. Yes. I mean, if you're going to drop to the knee, he had great momentum going forward, and I mean, what a great throw. All right, now you're ready. Now you're ready. Called strike, two balls, and one strike the count on Case and Cunningham. Last time I saw Cunningham play, he was three for three with four stolen bases, and it was a single to right, a single to center, a single to left. So he's a equal opportunity barrel when it comes to where he's gonna hit. And he's gonna have to get that barrel out a little bit sooner. Mobley, who's been up to 91 so far. His son calls his parents his inspiration, supporting his goals and dreams, dad pushing him, working on his skills. Mom working on the mental side of his game with him as he chases up and out of the zone. It looked tantalizing already this young man David touching 91. That high fastball Charles. Yeah, it looks like candy, gonna... but <laughs> You're not gonna quite catch up with that high fastball there. I mean, it's tough to hit It looks good because it's eye level, right? And it's staying up there. I mean, we, we don't yes. have the spin rates right now But by the way that ball stayed up, you know, it's got some spin on it as well. Connor Griffin, the other man you talked about, out of Florence, Mississippi, as he has that good, lively fastball on his knuckles. Owen won the count. He plays for the Knights Nation National Travel Team, was a 13U Select Festival athlete. And his mom is Kim. Dad is Kevin. Dad, the head softball coach at Bellhaven University. Great program in Jackson, Mississippi. Been there for a dozen years. Runner on his way to third, testing that arm. 
Into the dirt it goes. Nice job keeping it in front of him, though, by Ethan Murray at third. And that's, that's Slade Caldwell's game. Get on base, be disruptive, cause things to happen, and already on third base with one out here in the bottom of the first. I mean, he had a shot at getting him, but probably the throw was a little better. Maybe. You really don't see at this level, though, many accurate throws to third base. That's been my experience, at least. It's very difficult. You don't get too many opportunities to try that throw sometimes. Yeah, and the footwork is so much more complicated, I would guess, than throwing to second. Yes. Boy, that fastball has life. Jumps at the plate. The one that was in on his hands was just a bear that first pitch. Two and two the count. Well, I advertise Mobley as a, a three-pitch guy with a slider and a diving changeup. And he's pretty much oh. just gone high heat so far. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's awesome, man. I had a conversation with him, and I asked him, does he, do you, do you, does he throw a light uh, baseball or a heavy baseball? He told me he throws a light baseball. And it looked really light and hard, too. Yeah, when I think of a heavy baseball, I think down in the zone, sinking, yes. diving, boring, and that's just you know, flying out of the strike zone. The pride of Atherton, California, deals with them now. This is Dean Moss, home run derby champion before the game. Canes National, his travel team. And he's at IMG Academy, so missing mom and dad, making a sacrifice to grow his hey, baseball game. Let's go. Your pitch. Maha and Kane are his parents. And has had all sorts of fun winning championships. Won one at the Booma Complex just outside of Orlando with that Canes National team. There's a pretty change up on 2 0. How about you? Wow. That's a lot of respect for the hitter, right? Well, Moss not only won the home run derby, he was the offensive player of the year at the awards banquet last night. So, this is a young man who's well known to everybody for that big left handed swing. Change up followed by a fastball. What do you like about the swing, David? Well, it, it's not a swing. I mean, he you know who he is when he takes a hack. It's an aggressive hack. He gets right up on top of the plate. He, he's trying to intimidate the pitcher, actually. Um, it's a very aggressive swing. In fact, he's tapping out of the box right there. If, you know, he, he could get called out, I believe, in a big league game because he taps on top of the plate with that lead foot, which last time I heard was not encouraged by umpires. <laughs> uh, but that's how he wants to get on top of fastballs and drive them to the pole side. Boy, he is right on top of that plate, chokes up on the bat, and that pitch in. He ducks out of the way, and a run scores. And because of the position in the batter's box, Charles, it looked like Mobley wanted to come in just too far in, Charles. It's too far in, and what happens with a pitch inside where the hitter is that close to the plate as a catcher, sometimes you can't see it because it gets too far inside, and you lose sight of it. And, and, um, and last minute, it gets up on you. He, he probably didn't see it all the way. Yeah, that's, that's, I think, what happened just by the reactions. But Slade Caldwell get hits by a pitch, steal second, steal third, wild pitch to score. Popped up left side. Ethan Murray calls for it. Murray with the snow cone holds on. It was wonderful, and I mean wonderful, to see Chase Mobley work out on the mound.
picked up after the second inning this select festival beautiful jet blue park obviously made in the exact the exact dimensions of fenway park this is the winter and spring home of the boston red sox all the way down to the pesky pole and perfect game has a wonderful wonderful deep relationship not only with the city of fort myers but with this facility and david not just here obviously the legendary ted williams red seat when he hit it what about 500 feet the uh, retired numbers, the Hall of Fame numbers, the champions, and of course, number 42. But as you can see, deep into your shot there, if you're looking well beyond the walkway, that's that quad out there, David, and PG really takes advantage of this complex. Fun, by the way, when they open it. Look at the ceremonial first pitches. Yaz and Jimmy Rice and Tia and Evans. And they're the dimensions. This is a this is a true PG unique relationship. Oh, yes, it is, and, and the former home of the the red sox winter home we also utilize that the, the the five plex down in closer to fort myers but six fields in back this field you think hey this is a big league field in every way shape and form the way they take care of it but i, I must have seen 80 100 games here plus all the batting practices and everything over the years it's, it is a wonderful wonderful relationship this is Trey Morris. He goes to work on the mound. He's out of Fresno, California. So from the Central Valley in California, Washington Union, his high school, 2025 grad, Trotsky National. Abe Ruiz and Tommy Cardiel, his travel ball coaches. Randy and Stephanie are his parents. And his brother Derek, by the way, who's 20, plays at Westcliff University. So we'll get to watch Trey Morris work against Ethan Murray. We saw Murray playing third out of Buford, Georgia, East Cobb Astros travel ball guy. First pitch is a fastball for strike one. David Morris, scout him up, please. Morris is all about, and this is not something you're going to hear a lot at this level, all about fastball command. He spots his fastball as well as you're going to at this age. Into center field. That one is put away out there by Eli Pitts, the center fielder. Yeah. And we're not going to see the 92 like, like Chase Mobley's last pitch. We're not going to see the 89 from Strickland. It's more mid-80s. But he's going to go in, out, up, down. It's going to be all four quadrants. It's going to be with intent. And he's just been dominating with that singular ability. He'll spin one in there once in a while, but it's mostly a fastball package and command. Out of Lothian, Virginia, meet Aiden Harris. Manchester High School where he's a sophomore. Richmond Braves and Padres scout team, his travel teams. And he is a Virginia commit. Now, you'll find athletes committed at this young age, plenty of non-commits. And by the way, later on in the show, we're going to have a commitment. We're going to share it with you. So we're excited about that. And that's exactly what David's talking about. Good sink, a little bit low. Is this a young Charles Johnson body here at the plate? <laughs> I love this kid. Um, and what he, what he does that I didn't do um, as well is that he really stays inside the ball very well. And I truly believe that he's going to uh, learn how to start turning the ball uh, fairly soon um, as he gets a little, uh, little older. Yeah, it's something that I've seen him frequently over really in the last two years because he is so physically advanced. But it's very much part of his how he's been coached. It's very part, much part of the, the personality of his swing. And every once in a while you just want to go, Aiden, turn the barrel a little bit more because he's so strong and the ball comes off his barrel so well. But he'll learn. He's for, he just turned 15. He has lots of time to learn that. He will. Harris chases a fastball up and away after a pitch that was just a little bit down. So Harris goes down on strikes. And so a really good start for this talented left-hander. Principal's honor roll as far as the work he does in the classroom. Wanted to be a quarterback. Said, I'm a good quarterback. I want to do it. I want to do it. He said, I worked hard and I lost 20 pounds. And now he is a quarterback and a baseball player. As that one is sent into right field for a base hit. Omar Cerna picks one up. Big O out of Perlin, Texas. The young man who dreams of going to LSU. A talented player. A base hit from Omar Cerna. It's almost like Cerna had read the scouting report because this is a little bit off the plate. He's going for an angle, and Cerna just, he didn't try to do too much for it. If he had tried to pull that ball, it's a ground ball to the shortstop. Instead, he's on first base. It should have been. It seemed like it was almost like somewhat he, he was in between swinging and not swinging, but he hit it pretty well. Sort of, by the way, USA Prime, his travel team. Beat COVID last year, had to go through that war with it. And when he got COVID and Tim Anderson, his favorite player, here is Noah Sheffield. And in Noah Sheffield, you think about Christian Sheffield, who we saw last week, who was a member of the Select Festival and a, hit a double off the wall, nearly hit it out of the ballpark at OU. As that one is shot to the right side, his younger brother, and Noah Sheffield out of Tampa, Florida. If you're curious 
if the Florida Heat head coach Gary Sheffield is that Gary Sheffield and it's that, that's right. You're correct. All you have to do is look at the swing. I mean, that if that isn't a Sheffield swing, it doesn't exist. I tell you what, I really love this kid, man. Um, just to watch him look like his dad, the way he swings, and he's aggressive, and he has power also. He's played football and basketball as well. He said about dad, Charles, my dad inspires me to be a great player, but even better than him because he pushes me to extreme limits that I can handle, shows me I can be great at the same time while still pushing me, keeping me uncomfortable. I can surely understand Sheffield said that. Ooh, how about that breaking ball? What a beautiful pitch. David, you called it pitchability for Trey Morris. That's exactly what it was. Outstanding stuff for the left-hander, the talented, gifted left-hander. As we said, out of Fresno, California, the 14U Select Festival. We saw Chase Mobley pitch earlier in this game, and we respect who he is as a young man, what he's gone through. It was not too long ago that he lost his dad, Gene, who passed away because of COVID. His teammates here in this event honored him. They obviously bowed their head in prayer. This gifted young man who obviously with mom, Kim, and his younger sister will go on, and a dad who meant everything to him. When I spoke with him yesterday, he said, I, I really realize what a huge fan of mine my dad was, how much he meant for me, and we'll go on as a family, but we'll do so to honor him. So there are really no words except for to pass along that if you hit your knees at night and you maybe say some words up above, think about this young man because he and his mom and sister go on without dad. And kind of kind of courageous, David, to see him understanding those circumstances, you know, honor his dad and not too long after losing his father pitching this. Event. Yeah, and that's where it, you hearken back to how young Mobley has just turned 15 years old and everything that goes with that and take on that burden and still be able to come out here and 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 do what he loves and and do it as, do it as for respect and love of his father on the mound the big right hander and again we will always be thinking about him and when we say big we thought Mobley was big this gentleman's bigger and this is well, he looks like the tallest man on the face of the earth, quite frankly. Sam Coe's already 6'7", out of High Point, North Carolina, south of Charlotte Panthers. But, David, he's been this big for a couple of years. Yeah, and the, and the amazing thing about Coe's art, he, he's the number one player in the class. He's always been associated with the best player in this class because he is so advanced. He was throwing in Jupiter against the best seniors in the class. He won a game as a seventh grader. He's so advanced with everything he does on the mound. It's just not big and velocity. Xavier Nyans is his foe. We'll get back to talking about him, but quickly about Nyans and Xavier out of Mount Vernon, Washington. He's a catcher, third baseman, right-handed pitcher. Dad is Steve, mom is Leanna, and his younger sis is Harper. Dad played college basketball, mom played volleyball, and also threw on the track and field team at Oregon Tech. He's a select festival member, also part of the 15U USA team trial. So this is a very talented athlete from the great Northwest. I know, Charles, you were excited to present him with the first award last night, that power award. I was very excited about that, having the chance to watch him and on the field um, um, doing um, batting practice and watching him make some throws to second base. This kid has a world of a talent. Good fastball already, the high water mark of 90 miles an hour. Cozart, by the way, out of High Point, North Carolina. It is a family no, tree of talented players. Caleb Cozart, Jacob Cozart, both elite players. Caleb playing at UNC, Jacob at NC State. 
Yeah, and went a little bit low. There was a time when Jacob, in those travel ball events you're talking about, David, the Jupiter that David mentioned is not the planet. There's the city in Florida, certainly, but it's called the Worldwood Bat Association World Championship. If you're seeing us for the first time, it's kind of the greatest travel ball tournament there is. It's in the fall. So, as David said, it's only for seniors. It's not for sophomores and freshmen. No, and it's certainly not for seventh graders. <laughs> when we talk all the time on the All-American broadcast about players who played in Jupiter twice, he's going to play six times, potentially. Bounces that ball to the right side. Hi, Sunday. Hop a couple of steps to the bag. That's big Donovan Jeffrey who makes the play out there. So, Cozart and Charles, you're tall, you're strong, you have those catcher's hands, but I don't know if you can match this, and especially when you were a freshman. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you to work. You break this down, Charles. <laughs> wow. When I tell you that's incredible, that's incredible. <laughs> Didn't Johnny Bench yeah. have some sort of yeah, trick Yeah, I like think that? Johnny Bench, yeah, he, he can hold like five balls or something crazy. Hey, Danny, I definitely know you have some thoughts on, on Mr. Cozart and who he is. I have had the chance to spend a lot of time with him, especially at the National Showcase just a couple of weeks ago. And I want to tell you that Sam Cozart is the leader of this class, north, west, east, south. Everybody adores this guy, looks up to this guy. You mentioned his brother, Caleb, who's been following around this summer because he wanted to pay it back to Sam. He said, Sam's followed me around my whole career, so I wanted to pay it back. And something to know about his brother, Caleb, sure. he actually had a hemangioblastoma under his C1 vertebrae on his brain stem. They found it, and they found a cyst on the tumor in February of 2020. Eventually, it quadrupled in size. Sam told me this at the showcase. Eventually, his brother Caleb had surgery this past summer. It's all clear. They had it removed. Everything is good to go now. But the Cozart family, they are a strong family. And by the way, guys, he's the tallest of his two brothers. He's the youngest, and he is the tallest by far. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Danny Wexman. Very insightful. Vaughn Necker was his foe. He went down on strikes. Next up and going to work with a bat in his hands is Boston Kellner. A couple of thoughts about Necker in case it takes us a while to get back to him out of Murrieta, California. Dreams of being at LSU and Necker, a very talented athlete. Look forward to seeing him play defensively and also another at bat when you will see all 18 bat, including Kellner, as we mentioned, out of Colorado Springs, Colorado as he takes a pitch down and away. He says, and I quote, the best baseball experience I've ever had is being a part of the 13U Select Festival in Oklahoma City. We took tours of the Oklahoma City Bombing Museum and we learned a lot about our give back. Really raising money for pediatric cancer in Oklahoma City. Carrie and Robert are his parents. This is Boston Kellner. We haven't seen Cozart go into his four-pitch mix. He'll throw a changeup. He'll throw an 80-mile-an-hour slider, a low 70s curveball. We've just seen the precision fastball location. And come on, come on, come on. That one is driven toward right field, D. We have seen good fastballs up to 91 miles an hour. That one is hauled in. Braden Booth tracking to that short wall in right field. 6-7 with presence. Also young, the 14 you select best. all the way to beautiful Florida to see a talented pitcher from Arizona work and do so against the leader of this squad Andrew Jones is his manager and that's Andrew Jones of the multiple gold gloves 10 times of the nearly 450 home runs of course at 19 years old homered in the World Series five-time MLB all-star 
Andrew Jones, his son Drew Jones, a perfect game All-American and in all likelihood a first-round draft pick next year. Tanyan Sturts on the other side with a strong Major League career. He has such a presence about him. And you can see who he was. Very well traveled, made his big league debut with the Cubs in 1995. Giving back to the game, enjoyed the banquet with his family last night. Got to know them, it was a pleasure. Sturts against Andrew Jones. There's some great bloodlines, certainly, that have been passed along in all of these games. In both dugouts, you'll see Demetri Young. If you remember him, you'll see Flash Gordon, who obviously handed down the game. This man sitting to our right, Charles Johnson, has passed along a lot of wisdom. So those are the managers of this team. Now, as we said, we came to Florida watching Arizona and work. This Arizona is Cam Caminetti, the two-way player of the year, as earned last night. He's out of Scottsdale. Sparrow High School is his travel team. Dreams of going to Vanderbilt. My guess is he will have a lot of choices. Tracy, his mom, Dom, is his dad. And older sis is Katie. And he is a distant relative, a second cousin of Ken Caminetti. Yeah, I was talking to his father, Dom, yesterday because last year, Cam Caminetti wasn't a two-way guy. And I was asking Dom about, okay, how is he making the transition to from being a primary hitter to maybe being a primary pitcher now? Because he went from low 80s last year to touching 90-91 so far this year. So it's been a big jump on the mound. And Dom said he's still working on it. But that award he got last night is probably a, a great re, uh, affirmation of where he's headed. Good fastball dives down and away. Coy James out of advance in North Carolina. He was a 13U Select Festival athlete last year. Honors classes already. A straight-A student already. And a very gifted athlete, James, who plays for Davie County High School, where he is a freshman in North Carolina. And likes Tatis. Fernando spoke to these athletes last night, virtually certainly. We had a recent sit-down with one of the faces of the game. He had a lot of good things to say. Good pitch down and away, lifted to the right side. Easy snag out there. Slade Caldwell. A little bit of flair with that catch, dare I say. <laughs> huh, Charles? It sure was, right? That's what it's all about, just having fun, enjoying yourself out here. I think Slade actually thinks that is the fundam fundamental way to catch the ball. He has some flair to him. Yeah, he caught that very relaxed, right? <laughs> That's great stuff. Here is Cannon Golden out of Beaufort, Georgia, the speedy Slade Caldwell out there. He is a South Carolina commit. Holds his hands away from his body and skips on to the backstop. We had a little inner squad game yesterday that was uh, cut short by lightning but uh, right before that happened golden blasted a ball off the right field fence to show his combination of strength and and twitch yes i love this kid i love his approach he has a nice controlled uh, soft approach to the plate and um, I, I believe this kid's gonna do some damage pretty good pitch just a little bit low Golden loves Mike Trout. Trout's the most popular of all favorite players, but there are some interesting players. As a matter of fact, going through the thoughts of these athletes, 20 different players were listed. He drives that one to right field. Caldwell runs it down. Oh, David, did he square that one up, though. Yeah, that was almost it. More in the gap was the one yesterday, but that's he's showing his bat, certainly. You know, all barrel and, and off a lefty as well. That was a great piece of hitting. Great piece of hitting him. And like I spoke earlier, I love his approach. He has a soft, smooth approach, and he just releases that um, his hands and, uh, and just got through that ball. Yeah, that's so quiet. He's very Look quiet. quiet. He's quiet nice, yes. I mean, it's a nice approach. Austin Killingsworth fires that one right back behind him on a foul ball. Xavier Nyans is catching in his third inning. He took that one pretty square. Austin's out of Brooks, Georgia. Stars Mill High School in the home plate Chili Dogs is a travel team. Five star as well. And Killingsworth has the best 60 yard dash in this class at a 6.65, but just not a speedster. I mean, he, he's rocketed some balls in the in batting practice. It's, it's kind of a downhill swing that gets a lot of backspin on the ball and a lot of carry. So he changed his swing, D, back in 2020 in the summertime. He said he wasn't hitting at all, and he just kept working and working, and the approach paid off. 198 early on last year, 446 this year. I saw that, and I was wondering, there has to be a reason for that. And that's 
good, good stuff. He said he had changed it, and he kind of struggled through it. And he said, I just went to the cages every day after school. And this summer, it paid off. Well, as a hitter, that's what you're looking for, backspin on baseballs. But Charles, we were talking earlier about the emphasis now on, on lifting the ball. Well, sometimes the best way to lift the ball is to get that backspin, which is not the same plane. But should kids this age really be worrying about swing plane instead of barreling the, simply barreling the ball up? At this age, you're thinking about barreling the ball up. You're trying to really put the barrel on the baseball and, and, and focus on line drives. Because like I told you earlier, as these kids get stronger and, and, and grow and mature, that line drive is going to eventually be a home run. The talented left-hander, Caminiti. Oh, he really has blossomed over the last couple of years. That one skips in there. Nice patient at bat. I always marvel, Charles, how many times you go to an All-Star game. I had two All-Star games. So, I always marvel when you go to an All-Star game and you're patient. Because to me, if I went to an All-Star game, I'd swing at everything. <laughs> I don't know how, as we look at Caminiti's motion one more time. So, I guess just a point to make, good for Killingsworth. I totally agree. It's really difficult to take walks in all-star games. Yeah. You really want to swing the bat and do some damage out there. Especially when you know you may not get another at bat. Yes, yes. One more at most. I would say probably the toughest thing about all-star game for me as a catcher is that having to catch all-stars and have no idea what they're throwing, and you got to do it on live television, right? <laughs> That's a theme that we've developed, especially at the All-American game where we got guys throwing upper 90s and nasty sliders. It's The catcher, catcher is the hardest position at any All-Star game. It's, it's been very obvious over the years at Petco, and, you know, we're seeing catchers do a good job here, but they're, they're mostly seeing fastballs. Wait till see, they see the, the nasty slider that they've never seen before. Yeah, it's very difficult. You don't know the guy's break on the slider, and you're trying to catch him in real time, and... And um, to me, that's the hardest thing to do as a catcher is catch guys you have no idea about what they're throwing. Caminetti keeping an eye on first base, Austin Killingsworth. Xavier Rivera out of Puerto Rico, Leadership Christian Academy, where he's a sophomore. Pretty pitch just off the plate outside. He's an FIU commit, Florida International. Marvel Melendez has landed a commitment. Speaking of Merville, by the way, MJ Melendez, son, Royals organization, 35 minor league home runs this year. Former PG All-American. but Crazy. Yes, a catcher with that kind of power. And actually, speaking of catchers with power, I've got a comp for Rivera just because he. Uh, I'm told by the coaches, Charles, you probably saw, this young man enjoys playing <laughs> baseball more. There, there we see a catcher oh, comparison yeah. there. How about that? Little young CJ. But Xavier Rivera, I'm told, enjoys playing the game of baseball more than anybody these coaches have seen. And he hit a shot to first base. That's a nice play made by Noah Franco. Played it on the back end. Kim and Eddie puts a zero up on the scoreboard. The pride of Arizona camp. The Perfect Game Select Festival on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by G4. Baseball guards so comfortable you'll forget they're even there. Stay in the zone and make your moment in G4 baseball guards. G4, made for the moment. By Yeti, proud partner of the Perfect Game Select Fest. And by Oakley, proud partner of the Perfect Game Select Fest. Danny Wexelman, Charles Johnson, David Ronsley, my name is Darren Sutton. 
And on the mound, allow us to introduce you to David Shields out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mount Lebanon High School, Canes National, his travel team. He is already committed to go to Miami. He is the son of Marcia and Kevin. Dad played golf and baseball in college and a PGA pro. And a little bit more on what we are truly enjoying tonight. Let's bring back in Danny Wexman. D, what do you have for us? I got to talk to David earlier in the week. He told me he's been watching the 14U Select Fest since Cole Young's year in 2018. He was an All-American this year, and he said he made it a goal to get here. Something special about David Shield you should know. He doesn't typically throw a bullpen during the week or before games. He said he uses them very sparingly to get his arm ready, not for velocity. And he also told me he's got killer instincts on the mound. We can expect him to mix his pitches and eye levels. That's great stuff, Danny. Of course, Cole Young, perfect game All-American, probably a first-round draft pick next year, and a young man who is, like him, from Pennsylvania. And so he's watched him closely. Shields will work against Ethan Holloway. Out of Stillwater High School, Scorpions, his travel team. If you're a fan of baseball at the highest level where Charles played, his dad, Matt Holliday. Mom is Leslie. And boy, is this a good-looking young hitter. They're, 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 right now, we talked about like Aiden Harris before, who's all you know inside swing, opposite away. There's a couple hitters here who we already know when to when to lag the barrel and when to turn the barrel. And Holiday, who's one of the youngest players here, it's just 14 and a half, is one of those players. And you follow from a big league dad and all the baseball in his family, but he really knows how to lag that barrel at the right time. I'll tell you what he learned from from one of the best. Um, had a chance to play with um, Holiday in um, in Colorado. Amazing player, and he hits just like his dad, man. He has that bad drag a little bit, whereas he stays inside the baseball, but he can generate some power. It's a great shot of him with Dad a moment ago. Dad, of course, a two-decade career. Here's a little Ethan. When he was, you, you were with him in Colorado. That's when he was in St. Louis. Dad on the coaching staff at Oklahoma State, where Josh, Uncle Josh, is the head coach. And if you watch PG stuff a lot, PG content, you know that older brother Jackson, perfect game All-American. And in all likelihood, a pretty high draft pick next year. If not, he'll go to Oklahoma State. Down he goes, a fastball, snuck it right by him. High watermark on the fastball thus far at 84. Yeah, well, Jer Jeremy Brown, who who does so much of the scouting for this event for the PG staff, couldn't, been, couldn't be here after the recent birth of his first son. Um, he calls Shields the one pitcher he'd want on the mound if he had to win a game at this age group level. It's impeccable control. It's mid-80s fastball, sharp slider. But as, as he self-described, he's a warrior, and he's going to pitch to get outs. Well, that got him. Wow. We hardly got to know you, Eric Parker, EP out of Swanee, Georgia. We'll head on down. He's a South Carolina commit, Eric Dad. Natcher, his mom, we've watched him play at PG events last couple of years. All-American PG Select Festival player a couple of times. And a straight-A student. We'll talk more about him. He took that one that time. Shields obviously trying to get inside with the big power hitter up. P Parker, 6'3", 190 pounds. And a pitcher like Shields who understands pitching. It's like, oh, long arms? I'm going to see if I can get inside, maybe break a bat. You know, get him, you know, off balance. Mason Pike bounds that one into the dirt. Gets it out of his glove, gets to streaking Parker. That's all they will do. A nice job coming in and making that play. That's Noah Sheffield who turned it on over to Coy James in the middle of the infield. The hitter's aggressive here, and that's just playing into Shields' hands if they're going to go up sw first pitch swinging. Mason Pike, by the way, out of Puyallup, Washington. He's out there at first now. The son of Mark and Misty. Beautiful Puyallup, if you've ever been there. A 4.0 student who is now at first. Sean Gamble. He's an Iowa native. Sean, born in Iowa. Perfect game, born in Iowa. Cedar Rapids, Iowa in 1995, founded by Jerry Ford, who is now the president and founder of Perfect Game. Great visionary. And when you think about PG now with its 13,000 draft picks as alumni. As that one sails high and away. To the Iowan, Sean, USA Prime National, his travel team. David, it looks like he can play just about anywhere on the field. Oh, this is a twitchy athlete. He has speed. He's got some juice, and real juice in his left-handed bat. He is a guy, though, that you could see playing literally all over the field. But I think right now it's, it's the bat that's really uh, stood out. His hands were tied up 
but they were strong enough to shoot it through that five hole. There's a base hit at the select festival for Sean Gamble. Great but, piece of hitting, great piece of hitting, man. Really kept the inning going, and, and big hits like this really can cause a big inning. Whereas the next guy come up, who knows what can happen. He let it travel a long, long time here, Charles. He sure did. I mean, he kept his hands in well, and he was a little late on it, but he had good hand position and was able to drive it in between the hole. We've been watching Masa Chilcutt the last couple of years as well. He's out of San Antonio, Texas. Johnson High School, where he's a, a freshman. Canes National, his travel team. He's got a little specialty as a hitter. He's had, he has eight triples this year wow. on the WWBA circuit. Catchers aren't supposed to hit triples. Perfect Games, no. Perfect Games World with Bat Association is what David is talking about. And that means that players, even at this Look. age, they're playing in games with Look. wood bats against one another. And that's something very, if you're new to perfect game, you're watching this game, something to understand when I quote these statistics and all, these are all wood bat statistics. There are players out here right now who've had, you know, 200 at bats this year in WWBA events, all with wood bats. So, so there's no, oh, they're not playing with metal, they're disadvantaged, this is something new. No, this is what players of this level and this caliber work out with swinging games is wood bats. I think it's very good for these young kids because it gives them a chance to really get a chance to put a wood bat in your hand. I never grabbed a wooden bat pr pretty much until I was in the minor leagues and never thought about picking a wooden bat at 14, 15 years old. So it's a different swing between wood and, and aluminum. Perfect Games 14 Youth Select Festival here at JetBlue Park, the winter and spring home of the Boston Red Sox. Good looking breaking ball and he spoiled it. Yeah, the scouting report on Shields was a, was a fastball slider, but that looks a lot more like a, a true curveball to my center field eyes here. It did. It was more of a curveball, a slurred curveball in a sense. Shields will tell you, and I quote, pitching self-scouting report, accuracy on the mound and a high IQ, a lot of movement on my fastball, and hard break on my curveball, his words. Fires that fastball high, two and two, the count. And it looks like to me he's throwing harder than 85. He has a nice um, loose arm, and it, and it looks like the ball is jumping on you really fast. Probably hides it well, doesn't he? Yes. And so far, top fastball, 85 miles an hour. That breaking ball, he spun off it. He left that one behind. Yeah, he just tried to overthrow that breaking ball. So. Moss is very honest with us when he said the greatest challenge I've overcome is failure. Failure is something that every human has to go through, and I've had to learn to stay calm, have a short-term memory, bounce back to the very next play. Well, Moss, if you play baseball, it's what it's all about. And that one is high and inside. No failure there. He earns himself a walk. Masato Chilcutt. Masa Chilcutt out of San Antonio, Texas. Denny Wexelman, what do you have for us? Aaron, you mentioned Masato. I learned that's Japanese for honesty. His mom, 100% Japanese. He still has family there. You talked about his batting. He told me last year he has wanted to improve his hitting. That's something he's been working on. He said he's been doing a lot of T work. Clearly, it's paying off. Yeah, great stuff, D. Luke Papano now goes to work. He's an Ohioan out of Cincinnati. St. Xavier High School as he chases up and out of the zone. Five-star national, his travel team. Bambi, his mom, Joe, his dad. Well, Papano, the youngest player, I believe, in this game, 14 years, five months, almost was eligible for the 13U Festival this year. But a real true uh, two-way player. He threw in the inter-squad game, was up to 86 with a wow. big break and curveball. I think most of the perfect game staff likes him better, though, as an outfielder right now. Get some great face paint. There's a lot of paint going on there. In there, folks. You looking at home. Good fastball up and in. Be a strike. Gotta be a strike, buddy. He says Let's go. he shared with us his grandpa Papano played football at Kent State. Dad played football at Westminster. And his bro plays college baseball at Oberlin College. There's his favorite player, Tatis, quite popular. Tatis and Trout, those are the two names you see more than any. Charles, that surprise you? It doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, both of those guys are electric. I mean, their ability is, is unbelievable. And so 
those are people you pay to watch games all the time. And those kids love them. They, they have the right kind of fun, humility. Um, great players. Mike Trout's the most popular, as we said. Uh, as that one swung right through. Pitchability and high IQ. He knows he's got it. And David Shields showed it. Oh, that's a good-looking smile. That's a select festival smile. Nice job, David. Glad to have you with us at Perfect Games 14 New Select Festival in Fort Myers at Fenway South or JetBlue Park. And you think of the history of this game outside of last year when it was played in Oklahoma City. It's always been played in this pretty ballpark. But then there are the past MVPs. And you have Harris and on down Riley Stanford, Perfect Game All-American. We recently caught up with him on the PG National Radio Show. Sirius XM, Nolan Schubart, Antonio Anderson, what a great athlete he is, and uh, winning the award last year. So we'll have one at the end of this game as well. We'll introduce you to the new man on the mound, Cooper Rummel out of Austin, Texas. Cooper goes to work, so we get to know Coop as he is known. Austin Horns, his travel team. Nick DeSantiago is his travel coach. This is a young man out of Dripping Springs High School and the son of Kristen and Douglas. Dad playing some college baseball, mom college equestrian. Sis plays high school softball. David, what do you tell us about Cooper? Well, every roster is required to have a big, hard-throwing Texan, and this is the one. Uh, Rumble up to 89 with the fa fastball, big overhand curveball, so a, a fastball curveball guy. But you look at him, look at the, the strength already in his shoulders and his hips. Uh, that's going to be a big young man. And he's on is his first foe. What's up, guys? That's taking a peek in the east dugout. East is red. West is navy blue, and I mean navy blue. Good looking uniforms. Partners with Augusta. Eddie Zahn is out of Lakewood Ranch, Florida, Cardinal Mooney High School. Florida Burn, Canes National, a couple of his travel teams, Craig Faulkner, Dan Gitson, those two coaches. Is not committed yet, but has a great he's list going, of choices. Margin is mom, Ed is dad, he's and bro is hand. Brady. This is Eddie Zahn. Heard an interesting comp on Zahn uh, yesterday from somebody you should know, and that is he's a right-handed hitting Riley Green. Ooh. Riley Green referring to the perfect game All-American, I believe, what, the fifth overall pick in 19, 2019. And are already on the cusp of the big leagues with the Tigers. And knocking on this door, he's with Torkelson, the number one pick overall. The two of them climbing up the minor league ranks in the Tigers. Spencer Torkelson, Riley Green, special left-handed bat. That pitch is low. Now, Eddie does have... And it's pretty under control right now, but he does have some of the best hair in the 14U class as well. Oh, no doubt. We knew you were going to mention that, Darren. That's a Darren Sutton specialty. But I, I nailed Zahn. Is that right when I saw the kids coming into the hotel? It's like, we got to have that one. Yeah, it's big time flow. I mean, it's really being controlled right now. It's not the length necessarily. It's not going all the way down his back. But there's there's just a lot going on there. And it's that's impressive. There's a lot of, uh, well, whatever vitamins make your hair grow. That's how intelligent I am, folks. As that one skips in there. Would you say Everett Johnson is maybe runner-up in that category? Absolutely. Well, his Come is longer, and his definitely has kind of the, the wild and free look to it. Everett Johnson, talented outfielder. 
Micah Matthews also gets some honorable mention. There. <laughs> when you ask this man about who he is as a player, he says, and I quote, I hit for power, drive balls to all parts of the field. Pretty smooth in the infield with a very good arm. Zahn, South Scouting Report. Yes, I was watching him a little bit in batting practice, and, and uh, he has some pretty good pop in his bat. He didn't get to use it that time, Charles. He'll take a walk. Rumble trying to find the strike zone. And Nicholas Partridge out of Lakeland, Florida. Partridge, a third baseman. Lakeland Senior High School. Lakeland Ballers, his travel team. Eric. He had a chance as a very young man to be a part of MLB's Junior Home Run Derby in Cleveland a couple of years ago, and he was a finalist at Junior Home Run Derby. Good for him. Yeah, and, and he doesn't look like a power hitter. As that throw goes down the right field line, be at least one base for Zahn. Thinks about it, David. You're exactly right. At least one. How about two? So that one slipped away. Rummer, Rummel, I should say, had that one slip and fired it away. A couple of bases on the miscue. David, the scout, and you got to watch him run. Yep. You're talking about, though, the, the power or the supposed yeah. power of Nick Partridge. Yeah, Part Partridge, 5'11", 156 pounds, I think is what he's listed. It's a very slender build. But but I've been looking at hitter, especially hitters this age and hip, hip quickness. And Partridge has some of the quickest hips here of anybody. And that's what dri is driving his swing. It isn't any musculature, any physical maturity. It's just the speed in those hips. And he's got some of the quickest here. Well, hitting, that's all is about really generating speed. And... And you generate speed really, like you say, through your hips, your legs, and how quick you can um, rotate your hips. I think a lot of people, th hitters think, fans think, oh, you know, the strong look. It's like you're gener a swing that's generated from, from your upper body is never going to be as, as good a swing as one that comes from the ground up. It's not going to be there at all because you think about hitting pretty much. I mean, your hips really initiate the swing. I mean, your hands don't really initiate a swing. It's your hips. And that's how you really, you know, your hands and your arms really follow through uh, once your hips uh, initiate the swing. Yeah, your hands finish your swing, but it's, I mean, look at the size of your muscles down here, your thighs, your glutes. You want those muscles driving your swing, not your hands and your, you know, your arms. Yes, if you want to generate power. If you want to generate power. Now, there's a lot of great hitters who have that hand-generated yes. swing, and that's, that translates more to barrel accuracy. Exactly. Now, if you have both, then you get the names of the people we're seeing, the Tatises and the Trouts. Yes. Rummel had all the West teammates gather around him, and now they pull back together. 2-0 and the count with the runner at third as that one sails high and away. His dad, Dominique, got drafted out of high school talking about Nick Partridge, the hitter. 2001 by the Braves organization. Mom, Cassie, played softball as well, so both parents diamond sports stars. As that one skips to the backstop, not only is it ball four, but it's a run. And so the East squad will add on. Partridge will re reach, I should say, in the second walk. Zahn comes all the way around. Walk, miscue, then a wild pitch, and he scores. Well, Rummel right now is just struggling to find that release point. It's every, every just about every pitch has, has bounced in front of the plate. You even saw the throw to first base was low. So it's just a matter of readjusting that, that release point. Catcher had no chance at that one. Yes, he has been you know, throwing a lot of balls down and into lefties. And he just can't... Out of help right there sometimes. Oh, yeah. that, that's a, that's a, a perfect pitch to throw there. You know, maybe his, body, his delivery was too fast. Slow it down. Slow throw it down a breaking, with a breaking ball. ball. That was a great call. There's that hair, by the way, I was telling yeah. you guys about. <laughs> Micah Matthews is the hitter out of Bridgewater, Virginia. Overthrew the breaking ball that time. Matthews, a South Carolina commit, the son of Jenna and Charles. Now, he was a part of the 13 U Select Festival last year, 6'2", 190 pounds. My dad inspires me so much. He said, without him, I wouldn't be close to the player, brother, son, or human than I am without his guidance. Runner on the move. Throw down from behind home plate. And that is a stolen base. Camden Cluett is behind the plate catching. Just a very difficult uh, play to make um, as far as throwing a runner out there because you really focus on trying to get your pitcher locked in on throwing strikes. 
And when a guy's stealing like that, sometimes you just you're not quite ready to make that throw. Uh, it was a tough, hey, tough Josh, pitch. To throw. Good pitch. Got the outside corner. And sometimes when you're all over the place, that'll jump in there and surprise you. That's exactly what happened to Micah that time. A little bit of two-seam dive at the end. Boom. Got over the outside corner. And that'll feel good for Rummel. Here's Nolan Traeger. Catcher out of Spring, Texas, Concordia Lutheran High School. The Texas 12, his travel team. And he is a TCU commit. Dave, what do you have on Traeger? Oh, you 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 know what I'm going to say. He's a left-handed hitting catcher. That's one of my favorite demographics. <laughs> you just don't see left-handed hitting catchers, especially left-handed hitting catchers that show the offensive promise that Traeger does. So... It's that one hard. It flattens out on the right side. The play is made by Mason Pike. Fired it on over to his first baseman, Cam Caminetti. One more time, D. Here's that left-handed swing. Yeah, again, it's just it's a simple, quick, under control. You know, there's no overstride. It's a kind of swing you can see being very well timed. Yes. And really keeping yes. solid as as the game gets faster and faster. Right. I love his approach. Here's Braden Booth. He's out of Madison, Alabama. Viper Baseball Academy, his travel team. That one just off the plate. He's at a really good program. Bob Jones High School and the son of Brandy and Dennis. Braden Booth standing 6-1. He got a chance to hit that varsity squad as a freshman and play with two really talented guys, Slade Alford and Max Solis, who are really gifted players, high prospects. Those were his teammates. And when you make the team as a freshman, that's always a benefit. Got a pitch up in the zone. Line drive, base hit, an RBI, 3-1 the score. That a is, single for Booth. That's exactly the Braden Booth I've seen this summer over and over. He's up there aggressive, and he's strong, and that's a hard pitch to hit. That's that high fastball that we didn't see hitters getting their hands up to. This is up in the zone. He gets his hands up there wow. in a nice squared-up pitch. Wow. I mean, that ball was high in the zone, and he stayed inside of it and, and stayed on top of it at that. Yeah, that's uh, that's the swing I've seen on the same type of pitches all summer. Good job, Braden. Here is the aforementioned Everett Johnson. You were talking about his, his hair game as he gets a chance out of Youngsville, North Carolina, also part of that Canes national team. There's Nick. Come on down. He scores. And that pitch dives down and in. Rummel just trying to find the touch and feel. And as a catcher, it's really tough. You try to get your pitcher to stay focused and stay in the zone. Um, you do all you can to try to change up pitches every now and then, throw breaking balls, change up. Just try to get him to find some kind of release point. Yeah, and if you have a if you have a pitcher who's missing low consistently, where are you trying to set up? Are you trying to set up high and maybe how change his eyesight angle? Oh or? yeah, for sure. You try to set up a little high, give him a higher target, um, um, set up a little more outside to get him another um, a visual as far as throwing to home plate. Everett Johnson close to the plate as he rolls that one to the right side. That one trickles a foul for the young man. Wayne Country Day School, where he is going to work as a ninth grader. Speed and barrel control. So, David, good wheels, good bat control. Is that a fair self-assessment? Oh, yeah. Serious bat control. I, I mentioned he was first pitch swinging early. Aggressive hitter, but a, a 506 batting average in WWBA play this year. That's over 500. He also walks a lot. Very patient hitter who sees the ball. I think his on base percentage is what 659 or something this year. Wow! Just, just you know, the the consummate leadoff hitter. He and Slade Caldwell, very much the same player on the East and West team. Five seven and just pure leadoff hitters. Runner on the move. Slaps that one. Just foul. That would have been extra bases. <laughs> and that would have been a perfect, just like that was a perfect Aiden Braden Booth swing, that would have been a perfect Everett Johnson swing. Charles, I love that approach. Oh, that's outstanding. He, that ball really almost was fair. It was a fair ball there. And he took that right out of the catcher's yes. glove, too. <laughs> that's a good tight look at those locks as he nearly had extra bases. Ooh, he got him. Pulled that fastball with him. Got him in the hip, it looked like. 
Everett Johnson will reach. You know, guys, one more time. Charles, I'll put you on the hot seat here. This is the approach on that breaking ball that he nearly hit. Yeah, it like you say, he's right out of the glove right there almost. And, uh, <laughs> Good. Just looking yeah. for that fastball command, just trying to find it. Michael Torres walked, stole a base, and scored back in the first inning on Jacob Kendall's single. There's a couple of runners out there in front of him now. He's got an opportunity to add his own RBIs. The Miami commit. USA Baseball's 12U national team, 13U select fest guy. Is that one way inside, nearly got it. We'll see Torres on the mound later in this game. And last year at the 13U, it wasn't even a question of his taking the mound because he really wasn't a pitcher. This year he has become a two-way player, up to 88 with one of the best curveballs in the class. So a young man who's really, just like Cam Caminetti, has really diversified his, his skills in the last year. Slaps that one up into the seats and fouls it off. Whereas his father played youth and high school baseball while living in Cuba. When you ask him about his strengths, he'll share with you arm strength, fielding, and the way I'm comfortable with my strike zone. As a pitcher, David, you were talking about a four-seam, two-seam, change-up, slider, and curveball. And Charles, this is the other hitter I was thinking of when we were talking about Ethan Holiday and the okay. ability to lag the barrel or turn it. And this was the other hitter I was thinking of that with that mature ability. Well, I'll tell you what, on the, on the pitch, he hit the left field there, foul. I mean, he pretty much did what you was talking about with that bat track. Where's that number 34? Because Bryce Harper wears number 34. You get it whenever it's available. Good breaking ball, but it's taken. That's a positive sign. That's a heck of a pitch. And by the way, Mr. Kluett, nice job blocking it up. Excellent block. Excellent block. Three and one the count. Three to one the score. A couple of runs for the E squad. That one way in and off the plate. So Torres earns the walk and the bases are loaded. So we're talking about, you know, sharing who you watch, who you learn from. Mike Trout wins. Tatis Acuna second, but this is fun. So there were 20 different players selected. DeGrom, Otani, Harper, Tim Anderson, no surprise. Trey Turner, tall shortstop Dodgers. There's some tall middle infielders and Yadi Molina. Oh, Yadi Molina is the surprise there to me. I mean, obviously a, a, a potential Hall of Famer, probably, right. but... Would anybody other than a catcher? Catcher? I was just going to say two catchers voted for him probably. Well, there's six <laughs> catchers here, so. <laughs> Good breaking ball. Got the outside corner. No balls and two strikes to count. Charles, who's, who was your favorite player growing up? Oh, man. You know, I was a big fan of Andre Go. Dawson. Ooh, finish him, finish him. The Hawk was a Go. big fan. I was a big fan of his. Donovan Jeffrey. Slightly open stance. Jeffrey takes way outside off the plate. Donnie's out of Chester, Virginia. We were talking about him earlier. Katina and Derek are his parents. Quick hands, really quick hands. He's a pitcher, too. Excellent block. Yeah, Clue it, I mean, that was a fastball there with, with, with a guy on third base. That's a really tough ball to block, and he really got over there and... Um, he kept it in front of him. Hard to block fastballs. Hard to block it? fastballs, right? You just don't anticipate it, folks. Guys like Charles, they, they look for that curveball in the dirt, but not that fastball. There's the breaking ball just off the plate inside. The toughest pitch in baseball, right? A backup breaking curveball, right? <laughs> little smile there. That's a good looking yeah. smile from Jeffrey. Count is full. Runners will be trotting. Come on, Coop, compete, man. Cooper Rummel trying to find that strike zone as he loses it outside. That's ball four. 
Well, the bases will remain loaded. Jacob Kendall will get the call. Andrew Jones comes out. See if Mr. Jones will maybe go to one of his arms that's warming up. Let that young man get four outs as they're having fun. Mr. Booth came up. And he drove in a run in the fourth inning. Select Festival, which means you're an All-American. Cooper Rummel looking forward to seeing his future. Jones opens the door for another opportunity. It was such a great gathering last night at the Perfect Game Select Festival and an opportunity to celebrate, give awards away at the banquet. Here's that gold glove we were talking about. Just everybody really enjoyed themselves and you know, a lot of the fundraising going on. Jacob Kendall, the player of the Uts, that's a great shot right there of Everett Johnson, Augusta Impact Award. Charles, that's the award you gave away for the power, Xavier Nyans, Dean Moss, the hitter of the year, and then so many great players. A PG player of the year, Jacob Kendall, there he is. Yeah, look at that. that Seven big leaguers up there. With group them. of big. Charles, you look good up there. I'll tell you what, I can catch a half an inning maybe. <laughs> <laughs> And I, it looks like Flash Gordon could probably still throw that in to you, too. <laughs> yeah, a lot of funs. Danny Wexelman standing by. I think she found Mr. Cozart. D, take it away. I did find Sam Cozart a little bit taller than me. Sam, the leader of this team, you're up right now. You told me earlier this could be a three-peat for you. Two 13 you select fest. This is your third now. How good are you feeling? I'm feeling really excited. Glad our team's on top and that Wes is going to win this one. I've learned a lot about you, a lot about your pitching, a lot about your family. What part of your game are you most proud of right now? My consistency on the mound. It's I'm always there, I'm always going to compete, and I'm always going to win. How much fun are you guys having this weekend? It's awesome. It's the best event of the summer always. I'm happy. Sam, thank you. Thank you. Darren. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you for getting that, Danny, having that conversation. And so Noah Franco, as we thought, Noah may get this one out here if he can get it, David, and then work in the next inning. But Franco gets the call, the talented left-hander. Noah Franks is out of Downey, California. He goes to IMG Academy, which is in Florida. His dream school at this point is Tennessee. Claudia's mom, Sal, his dad, Noah Franco, baseball, basketball, soccer star as well. And so this left-hander with the mint glove, if you will. D, what can you tell us about Noah? Well, just like Chase Mobley was... was you know, 6'5", 190, that's what a pitcher's supposed to look like. This is, is version two of what a pitcher's supposed to look like at this age. Listed 6'2", 170, I think that might be selling him a little bit short on the height, actually. But just so athletic. You mentioned the other sports. He's a very accomplished first baseman, hitter, and really controls his body so well. Probably see an 86 or an 87 on the fastball and a big sweeping curveball. But this is somebody you, you're projecting down the road on. It's going to be a lot of fun watching him develop physically. As part of his South scouting report, South scouting report, I should say, he said, I'm athletic with long limbs. I'll throw a fastball, curveball, changeup, slider. David right on, narrowing it down in this game to just a couple of pitches. He'll face Jacob Kendall. And Jacob, of course, the player of the year out of St. Augustine, Florida. Jacob, first time up, played like it, swung like it. He singled and drove in a run with a beautiful approach back in the first inning. Yeah, this is definitely the hitter you do not want to have up with the bases loaded <laughs> if you're Noah Franco. Left, left on left, it doesn't matter. I think, I think Kendall had, like, what, 62 RBIs in 67 games this summer. And, of course, playing 67 games is huge. But uh, he, he's a hitting machine. Five-star national, his travel team. He's got the bases loaded. And he was squared up. I mean, right between the shoulder blades. And so command, a bit of a struggle continues for that, that West squad as that one's way high and inside. You hope Jacob's all right. Another run scores, by the way. And it's the fifth run of the game. Four runs in this inning. Ouch. And this is something you see at, at this kind of all-star game. You were mentioned before, Charles, about hitters being excited. Well, pitchers are coming in. They're only, you know, throwing the inning. They're amped. They want to, you know, show their arms. And this is what you tend to get occasionally at, a, at these type of games. You have to. I mean, your nerves have to be there. You're trying to do a little bit too much. Um, you're uh, trying to throw the ball a little harder than you normally would. And, and normally you have one inning to go out. It's very difficult to, um, to try to perform sometimes. 
Carter Smith is his foe out of Cape Coral, Florida. Carter last time up went down on strikes. Chokes up just a little bit on the bat as he takes up and away. Two and oh the count. A lot of the families and the local community embracing this event. Really had fun this weekend to know everyone and around the country traveling in here to Fort Myers. Good pitch, just a little bit low. Good take. Bounce back now, bounce back, let's go. Gifted two sport athlete and keeps his grades up as well. That one's high. And another run will score for the E squad. And here's Ethan Murray. Murray fly to center field to crank things up in the second inning. has decided to focus only on baseball. Some of these guys David will play up until high school graduation playing football and baseball. Maurice decided, you know what? All eyes on baseball. All eyes on baseball. And that's, you know, I, I fully support any athlete who wants to play two, three sports all the way through high school. But just getting, it's always nice when you see high level athletes and they are dedicating themselves to baseball and we're keeping the best athletes in this game. Yeah, I think I had a conversation with Murray, and I believe he said he plays. A, he's a basketball guy. Okay. And he plays basketball. I told him I used to play basketball his age, but I, I had to quit because I, I couldn't dribble. <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably need to get on YouTube to see see any highlights of Murray, because I bet you he could throw one down at six two and this athletic. Two and two, the count. Good dive on that two seam fastball. Keep it right there, Noah. Didn't chase three and two the count. He said, with regard to the pandemic, Murth Murray shared with us one of the great silver linings. I've been able to grow mentally and physically and continue my grind. That time a fastball, but a big beginning. Murray goes down on strikes. All kinds of runs for the E squad. They lead it by five.
Carolina commit. And the son of Jeff and Natasha as that fastball is up and away to Eli. Yeah, I mean, that catcher, he's, um, he has an old school Tony Pena stance. It's Omar Cerner working behind the plate as that one is fouled off at home plate. I love catchers who get down in that. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love it. And Omar Cerna, you know, six feet, 185 pounds, maybe even bigger. You don't think of that flexibility, but I love seeing yeah, that flexibility, especially that. on that size. Yes, but he gets down there very well. I like this kid, too, man. I had a uh, conversation with the catchers. Uh, and I had a chance to sit down with all six of them, really talk to, talk to them about catching the game of baseball, and this kid was very attentive. Calls for a pitch. So I say start that breaking ball here. You'll get it there. That one misses down and away. You can see exactly what he was trying to do. Mr. Pitts, mom, Natasha, college track star. Dad played high school basketball and football. We're going to get a chance to watch that speed maybe go to work. This could be a fun matchup. Eli Pitts is on with a walk. Pitts, one of the faster, faster uh, athletes in this game. And I don't think the score is going to matter a lick when it comes to how aggressive players are going to be on the bases. And it shouldn't because you're here to <laughs> showcase your ability, right? Exactly. Jack Record, family, friends, they're safe but recovering from Hurricane Ida. This is a young man out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the runner on the move right away. Cerna fires it down. And a stolen base standing up. Got a big jump. Hits with the stolen base. I don't think there's a thing Cerna could have done about that. Nothing he could have done about it. I'll tell you what, though. He um, he really made a great throw. I mean, considering where is that, I didn't think he had a chance, but he really got the ball down there in, in great time. Record a very talented left-handed bat, and he believes that's his biggest strength as well. He said, I've tried to evolve to where I can hit the baseball to all fields for a high average. High baseball IQ worked on that a lot. Good pitch. It's the outside corner, two and one. Hey, watching Rutgers over the last last three days, I've been very impressed by what a fundamentally sound player he is. He's somebody who looks in all aspects of the game to understand what he's doing. Very balanced and under control in the middle infield, and really the same way in the left-handed batter's box. He sure is very balanced uh, hitter. Ryan Terrio, you folks remember that name, Terrio, of course, LSU. He grew up in Baton Rouge. He says, although he has a couple of World Series rings, he always makes time, teaches baseball to young players from eight years old all the way to the minor league system. Terrio is a guy that he really looks up to. Good looking breaking ball, even better approach as he finds the hole. It's a base hit into left field. Great pitch, but an even better approach. Yes, I, I tell you what, I mean, he really stayed back with his baseball and, and, um, and drove it right in the hole there. That's a matter. It's two strikes. You've got a runner on second. You just want to put the bat on the ball, make something happen. And that's the maturity, I think, that you see in his game. He understood a game situation, even though it's an all-star game, and he executed it. And it, it, what happened there, too, also, is that the shortstop was concentrated on pits a little bit, and it created a little hole over there for him. So it was a big help, whereas if you got speed on the bases, it does create holes for, for hitters. Good stuff, Charles. As we watch Cam Caminiti hit now, we saw him pitch earlier, the talented two-way player. Camo from Arizona, Suaro High School in Arizona in Scottsdale. The Sabercats, by the way, if you're curious. Swings right through that one. 13 U Select Festival athlete, and all through middle school, this was a 3.8 to 4.0 student. Bishop's got some life on that fastball, D. Bring him in, bring him in, let's go. Working it to the corners, but he's throwing his breaking ball for a strike. He's one of the first pitchers we've seen who's throwing his, the breaking ball for a strike fairly consistently. Here's that hammer oh, you're talking great about. Great stop right there. And that's what made it great. There's a runner at third. Pitts is just bearing down. Loving and hoping the gate will swing open and he can take off. And Eddie fights that elevated fastball off. When you talk about Bishop, he speaks of his mom. He has so much admiration and respect for Julie for a lot of reasons. But one of those is 
He's had to be with her as she battles cancer. He said she's handled it with such grace and strength, but also calls it one of the greatest challenges he's had to overcome. As that one is lifted into left field, hugs the line, hugs the line, and it's foul. Stay on it, stay on it. So, guys, they all mention big leaguers, right? Who do you watch? And they all mention big leaguers. Who do you learn from as you see that one foul? But it's interesting when you think about, you know, kind of being present. Jack's Bishop, he didn't mention a big leaguer. He mentioned Jack Leiter. First round pick, Texas Rangers, PG All-American, just starting his pro career. That's who he looks up to the most. Well, there's a, and that's a great, if you're doing a comp, if I was thinking about doing a comp, as we see a change oh, up there. Oh, oh, oh my nice. goodness. There is a double steal. We might have to get back to David Starr real quick because the double steal here and the beautiful throw. Wow. Well, I tell you Her what. Run scores. Oh, man. I mean, he stayed back and came out throwing this ball. And you know what makes that so difficult as a catcher? There's nobody at the base, and you have to really narrow in and try to throw that ball through the base and hope that somebody gets there. And that time it was Noah Sheffield who came in and made yes. that great Baez-type tag reaching back as well. Good call on the tag, too, D. You were making the point about Bishop and Leiter when this broke out. Well, and we saw some of their lighter known as a four-pitch guy, works off his fastball, but I believe that was a, a strike-three changeup, actually, from Bishop on the mound. Wow. On the ground. Nice dig at first. How about you over there? Aiden Harris cleaning it up. But all I do is look to my right, and I see a long-time all-star big league catcher, gold glove winner Charles Johnson just frothing in the mouth wow. when he watches. See the wows <laughs> when he sees a throw like that. Select best back in a moment. game I saw him but uh, yeah that those rankings will be updated shortly in fact after this game within the next week or two and there'll be some changes but uh, it's still fun to see. one more point about that Luis Almeida number four on that list has chosen to go the international route okay so he will be dropping out of the rankings um, because of that okay good stuff good stuff good insights David Ronsley Charles Johnson sitting over to his right Danny Wexman with her great stories and conversations down in the dugout I'm Darren Sutton Tanyan Sturtz, manager of this East squad. Flash Gordon, remember him? He's on that coaching staff. Charles Johnson's on that staff, but we stole him away. He's up here as our analyst. <laughs> I think that, 
Charles, what do we do here? They're calling you. Charles, what do I do? <laughs> Charles, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I, I don't. I, Charles, answer. I don't know what to do here. And here we go. In fact, we Charles came up here before the broadcast wearing a red shirt, and we had to change Same shirts because you can't root in the press box. Yes. <laughs> Franco back out there working. We saw him come on and pick up his teammate, the talented lefty out of Downey, California, and he is dealing with Aiden Harris. Harris is second at bat. He makes a nice pass at the baseball and fouls it off. Aiden's nickname, Cuba. He's out of Midlothian, Virginia, Manchester High School. And he is a Virginia commit. You talked about seeing him at the Hank Aaron Invitational, Charles. Yes, this kid um, was very impressive. I mean, he generated, generated great power. Um, I like the way he keeps his hands inside the baseball. And um, uh, I, see this, I see this kid having a bright future. Dad played college baseball at Virginia State University, his dad, Rennie. He's got an MVP award, MVP pitcher, if you will. Went to the PG Coastal World Series in Virginia and took away the hardware. Really dealt. So on the mound, there's a lot of talent, too. The Richmond Braves 14U team had in the middle lineup hitting three Aiden Harris and four Donovan, all 6'2", 200 pounds of Donovan Jeffrey. And that had to be the most intimidating lineup in the 14U baseball circuit. There's Andrew Jones. A lot of people happy as a Braves fan. That one is high. Andrew staff, by the way, Dimitri Young, 13 years in the big leagues. And then great support staff, great amateur baseball guys, Bobby Freeland, Rico Billups, and Tony Ficaro. Can I go on record as saying I think Andrew Jones belongs in the Hall of Fame? Sure. I tell you what, he had a great career, man. Great yeah. career. And, and you try to measure on the measurables as we see a walk there to Harris. But when you win 10 straight gold gloves, gloves and you are being talked about as one of the greatest defensive center fielders of all time, oh, plus you hit 400 home runs or something. <laughs> it's like, why is there even a question about why Andrew Jones in the Hall of Fame? I tell you what, I played against um, Andrew for a lot of years, man. I just enjoy watching him playing on the other side of, uh, other side of the field. A wonderful opportunity for these young athletes to learn from all of these coaches, but especially a guy like this. It's an incredible resume. I mean, you remember the journeys at the end. He certainly had those, but to most of us, he'll always be a brave. Runner on the move. It's fouled back. Cerna spoils that one. By the way, this is the dude you've been enjoying watch catch, Charles Johnson. We're going to see him hit now. Oh, I've been enjoying watching him. He took a big hack on that first strike, sure too. sure did. Little League home run champion earlier on his resume and a huge Tim Anderson fan, White Sox. You know, I tell you, it's nothing like a catcher behind home plate. And I spoke to the kids early on about having that presence behind home plate because it means a lot to a baseball team when the catcher's behind home plate. He's dependable. He shows, shows up every day and brings energy. And, uh, and that's what that kid is doing. That's Camden Cluett, and this is his second inning of work right next to him, the Texan. Cerna, the catcher as well, when he goes back out. Hammers that one toward that wall in left field. Over his head, high up that wall, it nearly got out of here. Oh, it just missed. In with the double. He bangs it off the monster. Wow, Omar Cerna. No two-strike approach there, Charles. <laughs> he got a hanging breaking yes, ball. Yes, he had a hanging breaking right ball, and, and pretty much he took advantage of it. I mean, that ball came right in the wheelhouse, and he, he kept his hands in and turned on it nicely. Darren, what I'm thinking about is Luke Heyman, and another catcher in the All-American game, did the same thing. He didn't have to hit it over a 42-foot wall there. He got a home run, Cerner with a well-earned double. Well, that's some kind of cool, isn't it? What a memory for this young man. Sheffield takes the pitch up and away. Noah down on strikes, looking back in the second inning. 2024 grad, the Florida Heat. Travel ball man takes up and away. You're right, you're right. Come on. He said one of his bigger challenges, and I can actually relate to this. He said, I overcame people telling me I'm only good because of my dad. So I work hard every single day to show my results. 
a mile high center field squaring that one up out there is Slade Caldwell makes the play tagging and hurrying toward the plate with the slide in there safely is Aiden Harris credit Sheffield with a high fly ball sack fly and an RBI it may not seem much but I tell you what um during a regular season that's an RBI <laughs> and that's huge <laughs> yeah, he got under that one too. Yeah, there was some just hang time that. on that one. Yes. He did just miss it. And count me as old fashioned. I know they don't like things like RBIs and pitchers wins anymore and stats. I love RBIs too. <laughs> I love them. To the backstop it goes. That one skips away. Coy James was the hitter. Cerna looking for some love in that dugout after hitting the ball off the monster. He has to look too far. James fly to right field. North Carolina native last time up. Middle of the diamond and into center field. It's a base hit for Coy. James and an RBI. What a beautiful piece of hitting. So in back-to-back -back at bats, we have quality at bats. We've got a single and we have got just prior to that a deep fly ball for a sack fly. We're going to see that swing again and another short swing. James was at the festival last year, the 13U festival, as a pitcher, and he improved so much as a middle infielder and especially as a hitter this year. He's back, but at a different position in the middle of the field in the batter's box. Love that approach. What a pretty, pretty swing. Golden with that power. If you missed his at bat back in the third inning, the view for Georgia man. On a very level, long time through the zone swing, drove a screamer to right, but it was right to the right fielder. And Darren, I think you hit, hit it on the head there. It, the, his barrel stays in the zone such a long time. It's going to maximize the contact. Joanna James give him a stolen base. Though that ball was in the dirt, he had already taken off. And that's always a sign of a great hitter when a guy's bat stays in the zone a long time. I mean, as a catcher, you dread that because you know he has a chance to hit that down down the way breaking ball, a tough pitch. Pretty pitch. Speaking of tough pitches, that was a good one. Fastball, Charles, that hits the outside corner. What a great baseball name, too. Cannon Golden. Cannon puts one on the ground. A high hop on this Sunday night. Oh, my goodness, nice arm, and he showed it off. That's Quentin Young. Oh, Quentin. The nephew of Dimitri Young. Oh, my goodness, David. Oh, yes. I, and, and a tendency, and we saw it earlier from Noah Sheffield on the ball that Aiden Harris picked. I've noticed a lot this week in practice, the infielders tend to let up on their throws a bit instead of throwing right through the first baseman. It's almost like they're aiming the ball. And there was no aiming the ball no, right there. No, no aiming at all. He let that one go. Young makes the play it short. Killingsworth rolls that one to the right side. I know Danny Wexelman may have a little bit more about Q out there at short. Danny? It was so great to catch up with him this week and learn about his family. You mentioned Dimitri, who is in the dugout. He's having a blast with him. But it's his grandpa, Larry, Dimitri's dad, 70 years old. He and Q train together every single day in the gym working out. He credits his grandpa for getting him to this point today. And he tells me they have fun working out. His grandpa's tough on him. But the best thing he's taught him is not to be too hard on himself. Oh, that's great stuff. Thank you, Danny. And Larry Young, very well known for being the father of Adelman and Dimitri, of course, Adelman, a number one overall pick as well. Military man and obviously a career pilot and known for having uh, his kids live all over the country because he was in the military. But boy, the love and respect Dimitri has for his dad. Austin Killingsworth. I think the coolest part about that, Charles, for Larry, Grandpa, is when you get to the point that you can retire, and then you can really teach your grandkids the game. When you're working every day, it's a little harder. That's a cool story Danny shared with us. Very cool story. I had a chance to meet uh, Dimitri's father in uh, Vero Beach at the Hank Aaron Invitational. When I tell you that he's a great man, um, nice dude, um, um, you know, Dimitri talked very highly of him, and I, I'm just had a, this great. I had a chance to meet him. 8-2, to two, the E-Squad on top. Two and two, the count on Austin Killingsworth out of Brooks, Georgia. Killingsworth spoils that one down and away. 
spoiled about four or five pitches yes. so far this at bat. <laughs> So I go to venture that that uh, Dimitri's father is just as proud of him as what for what he's doing coaching at Camarillo High School as for what he did during his what 13 year big league career. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine. I know Dimitri feels that way. Swings right through a fastball. Down he goes. Right now, having some fun at Perfect Games 14 U Select Festival in beautiful Fort Myers, Florida. Bring home with the Red Sox. There's the meat hook, Dimitri Young. We were talking about him earlier, head coach, Camarillo High School, a 13-year big league career, hovered right around 300 his entire career. By the way, this year at Camarillo, they won their league, and it had been a long time since they had done that. They also played deep into the CIF championships, and, uh, boy, impact as a high school coach. He is loving every moment of it. Quentin Young, his mate, his man on the team and his nephew the shortstop for a bit tonight they all keep an eye out on the man on the mound this is John Lash he's out of Charlotte North Carolina Charlotte Christian School and the South Charlotte Panthers his travel team Pete his dad and Kelly his mom his oldest brother is Peter David is his second oldest and Ginny the second youngest sibling and those three older siblings keeping an eye out on baby bro and I bet they're really proud of where he is right now tonight yeah, and it, probably one of the last people that we really selected or were aware of to this team because Jeremy Brown, who I mentioned before, who's our ace 14U under scout, was literally walking fields at the 14U under, saw this big left. He said, hey, I'm going to go over and check him out, see what he's throwing. He was throwing 88 to 90. And Jeremy, who knows every player in the country at this level, had never heard of him before. <laughs> and Jeremy said, like, oh, my go goodness. Wow. Cam Gluett has his first at bat of the game. We've seen him catch already. Servite High School, a power high school in Southern California. Your Belinda, USA National TB SoCal, his travel teams. And so Gluett takes up and inside. He's a son of Allison and Brandon. Mom playing volleyball at St. John's and Cal State Fullerton. Dad, soccer at Berkeley, Cal Berkeley. Fouls that one off at home plate. And talking about parents, Lash. His dad, a bit of a legend, if you will, as far as athletically, his dad, Pete. His dad, Pete, played professional handball. As a matter of fact, participated, Lash, his dad, in the 84 and 88 Olympics, won Sportsman of the Year two times. Mom, by the way, amateur athlete, but a great marathoner and triathlete. Wow. Genetics. Two-time Olympian. Wow. wow. In the sport of handball. Others great athletes, all kinds of good stuff. For Starin, we are also in the presence of an Olympian, so that should probably <laughs> exactly right. be acknowledged. 92, yes. right? 92 Olympics, yes, the year of the dream team. And I tell you, I really enjoyed that year, having a chance to walk out with Michael Jordan and Larry Bird and, and with USA across your chest, a great feeling. Well, maybe some of these players will have that opportunity someday. I know at the younger ages, a lot of them, at, many of them have the opportunity to play for USA Baseball, play for that 12, 15, 18 U national team. That probably is in the future of a lot of these young men as well. Yes, I tell you what, it's a great experience. I had a chance to um, uh, win, I won a gold medal in the Junior Olympics. 
in Australia. So, I mean, um, yes, I had a long history with the USA family. So I bet if I'm going to talk to those guys you mentioned, Barkley and Jordan, I've heard of them before. <laughs> I bet they'd say they, they were excited. They got to walk out with Charles Johnson. I mean, you're kind of selling yourself a little short here. Well, that's pretty good. Doing a basketball broadcast right now saying the same thing. Fights that one right back to the screen, does clue it. Who else was on that 92 Olympic baseball team? Wow, you know, um, you know, um, my good friends, um, uh, Michael Tucker and, and Jeffrey Hammonds and Jeff Akhair. And we had um, uh, Giambi was on that team. Um, the roller into the big part of the field, played on a backhand, tries to recover, and unable to do so. That was the second baseman, Ethan Murray, that time. So Kluwit is on with an infield single, and they'll take it. Michael Tucker lately. It's a good mention by you. We've seen him involved in the amateur game. So I'm at Perfect Games National Showcase in St. Pete. Yes. Noah Franco has a bat in his hands, and he will go to work and hit as that one is way high and inside. We saw Noah working, obviously, as a pitcher. Let's go, Franco. Come on, baby. Come on, drop on him right now. Lash paints the outside corner with that one. Pretty pitch. Max Fried, perfect game All-American. That's who Lash loves to watch work as he buries that fastball on the hands inside. And that's a that's a perfect comp for a young pitcher to to emulate same same basic body type and uh, freed part of that amazing Harvard Westlake program that John Flaherty and Lucas Giolito, two other perfect game All Americans, all pitching at the same time on the same high school team. You watch this kid uh, last year. You can tell that it's, he has a lot of room to grow and fill in, and he he's going to be a strong kid, I believe. Yeah, and he threw that exactly where he wanted on yes. that pitch. Come on, Slade. Slade called well. Outside, 1-0 oh, the count. Slaterade. That's a nickname that he bears. Slaterade. Slaterade, okay. <laughs> I like it. There's a little swagger in his step. Keely and Lexi are his two older sisters, both in their 20s now. I'm not going to compare somebody to Lenny Dykstra like I did at the top of the show without him having a little bit of swagger. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Canyon Sturtz will make a visit to the mound. I know wanting to manage his outing, John Lash made it clear. I think I want to manage my outing, and there's some good stuff there. Boy, what a really good athlete. So let's see if Sturtz will take the baseball from him on 1-0 the count. My guess is that's what will occur. And so while Lash, as one of the best players in the country at this age group, has his moment, we now step aside. 8-2 the score. Hey, it wasn't a good check now. It wasn't a good I'll have to preach him off if you feel
Madison, Alabama. Look, he's already put a bat in his hands, and he's already contributed. He's got a pretty swing. Braden Booth takes the rock, and he rolls. This right-hander going to work now, and he will come on. We'll get to know him as a pitcher, though. Viper Baseball Academy, Bob Jones High School. And uh, Dennis and Brandy are his parents, but when you... Talk about him as a hitter, David. He already showed out with a pretty single to the right side. As a pitcher, who is he? He's up to 89 with the fastball. Also throws a slider and a changeup. Um, but again, just such, such a good athlete. And I think I mentioned before, we only have 10 primary pitchers that only are pitching and not hitting like a Samuel Kozart at this. And every, all the other pitchers in this game are true two-way athletes. And there's no reason at this point to to pigeonhole them into, oh, he looks like a future pitcher, he looks like a, a future hitter. They're way, way too young to do that with. We'll watch him go to work now and uh, against Slade Caldwell. Caldwell ahead in the count. And instead of looking at a lefty, he'll now look at a righty. So he will change that pitch recognition line of sights. In this 8-2 game. Glad to have you with us at Perfect Games 14U Select Festival. That one sails high, jumps out of the zone. 2-0 the county, inherited a 1-0 count. And all these young pitchers come in so excited, it's almost like required that you're going to miss up in the strike zone with that first, first fastball. That one stays up again, 3-0 the count. Math and science in the classroom. A really good student, by the way. National Honor Society. As that one sails high. That is ball four. Caldwell earns the walk. Case on Cunningham now. Come on, Casey. At some point, I think we might have a commitment coming up pretty soon. Stay tuned. That's okay. Come on, Sid. Hey, Make no on promises. That one is up and away. And you give no clues either. No, I try not to. I try not to. That's fun. Every year we, we seem to, at this age group, find an athlete who will commit. Good pitch, you know, on the hands from Booth. Hey, don't try to do too much, Case. Come on, Case. Cunningham uh, had a pretty bad injury this spring before summer baseball scheduled started. Hand injury, back injury from growing. There was a cast, there was a back brace involved. He said it was tough. He said he worked really, really hard. I was scared, but I rested. I prayed a lot, he shared. All my teammates were playing. I wanted to play so bad. You know what I did? He said I just visualized every day. When I got healthy, I got back on the field, I would make an impact. And here he is. Charles, some athletes stay healthy their entire lives, and they have good fortune. In fact, my father had a Hall of Fame career, was on the DL just once, and it was at the end of his career. But it does build some character when a young man like this has to go through a serious injury at 13, 14 years old. It does. I mean, um, you know, it's hard to play sports without having injuries, but at the same time, you have to have um, that awareness and that, that fighting you to try to come back and battle through. There are very few guys that can possibly say they played their entire career other than Cal Ripken Jr. maybe. <laughs> See how good he is in the classroom, history and science. As he slices that one foul off to the left side. Yeah, I'm going to tell you Cunningham scouting report. These are his words. Ready, folks? I can really hit. I have quick bat speed, have good hands through the zone, make consistent barrel contact. Now my goal is to have a quality at bat and can peach every single at bat I have. Those are the words of this man hitting. Would you concur with his words? I would definitely yes. concur. And as I mentioned, he, he's one of these hitters who he's going to hit the ball hard to all fields. So as we take a look at Braden Booth here on the mound as he seeks to find a little twirl there at the end. But uh, and if he challenges Cunningham with the fastball, that upper 80s fastball, Cunningham has no problem going to left field with that. And that's really where he's looking on fastball. Breaking ball, he's going to hit it the other way. On a backhanded play, Booth covers. That's a nice play on a flip. Outstanding job at first base. 
by Donovan Jeffrey. Ended up leaving his feet. He hit a streaking booth, heading over to the bag in time for the out. Good defense there. Yes, that was a great play uh, by Donovan. I mean, he, he really stayed with it and, and heads up play by Booth to getting, getting over there in time. How many times did you rip off that catcher's mask and scream at your pitcher to get over <laughs> get there? Get over there, get over there. Because <laughs> all I'm thinking about is that you're trying to cut down a big inning, and now it's two outs, and you got a chance to get out of the inning, and that's what baseball is all about. Connor Griffin, KG, Florence, Mississippi. Jackson Prep is where he goes to school. He's been a big part of the select festivals. He was there last year. He's been a big part of USA Baseball and Cary. He's one of the top players in the country, certainly. And every time I see this kid, it just looks like he's going to do some damage. And he's got such a, just watching him on the field and going to the bus and in the hotel, he has such a calm demeanor yes, to him. Yes. His, he's got that low heart rate about everything that's like, yeah, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I'm not getting too excited about it, though. Quick visit, quick conversation. So when you think about Griffin, what you're talking about, guys, you've got to think that a little bit of dad's influence is there. Dad, Bellhaven University, Jackson, Mississippi, but he's coached the sport for a dozen years. So dad a coach, a diamond sport guy, and, and just been around the game. Mom is Kim, by the way. And so there's some teaching there. There's some guidance of a college coach at home as dad. Talking about Connor Griffin, of course. Come on, KG, get him in right here. That was way inside. That's ball four. He also strikes me as the kind of athlete that kind of pick your sport. I mean, he's played them all and he's played them well, but baseball is fortunate he's picking baseball so far. Oh, yeah, and we we mentioned that with a, another player before. You know, with, um, who was it before? Uh, a lot of them, by the way. Yeah. About, yeah. about five or six. <laughs> Murray, Murray, Murray. Murray, the yeah. basketball player. Uh, yes. Griffin, the same type athlete, 6'3", 180, you know, Six seven runner. You can just imagine watching him jump with that that body type, or throw a football, or you know run a fly pattern. Anything, yes. anything he wants to do athletically. Dean Moss can do a lot of things athletically out of Atherton, California. One of the great pure hitters in this 2025 class as he pops that one a mile high to the left side. That's well struck. Shy of the track, trying as long as he can to stick with it, but unable to make the play out there. Cannon Golden all the way around with the head first slide. With a couple of runs scoring there is Griffin, and then everybody else joined the party as well. That emptied him. You have two outs, everybody running, and that ball's way, way up there. I wish I'd gotten a hang time on that one. <laughs> Golden's on the bicycle the whole time. Three run score. Wow. That's a tough play, um, but it heads up by the base runners. Uh, all of them running and not anticipating he would catch the ball. Uh, it's just a short sample size here, but Booth struggled with location to the right handed hitters. The last two hitters, left handed hitters, he's been down there at the bottom of the zone. That one barreled in the left field. Yes, yeah, slashed into left field by Nyans. Here's the throw to the plate. On a hop, tag is waiting in time for the out. That had to feel good out there in left field for Golden to get another chance to put that athleticism to play, and he made a beautiful throw, but I'm pretty impressed by the piece of hitting by Xavier Nyans. My goodness, we're all having fun at the Select Festival. New Select Festival, Fort Myers, Florida. Danny Wexelman's got something cooking down below. Danny, what do you have for us? 
I told you we had a few more surprises, and I've got Noah Sheffield here with me. Noah, big week for you. I know that you've made a big decision when it comes to furthering your education and where you want to play baseball. What have you decided this week? Well, first and foremost, I would like to give all glory to God and also to my dad and Tony Nunez. Uh, they've been a big part of my life, helping me get to where I am today. But without further ado, I would like to announce that I'll be committing to Florida State University. <laughs> Florida State University, Mike Martin Jr.'s program. A big day. It's exciting. He's got his team behind him, his family. Noah, what kind of factors went into this decision for you? Uh, the school just made me feel welcomed. Um, I have a lot of family up there. Uh, alumni is just a great atmosphere, and I think it's a great college town. Can you tell me what kind of advice Dad gave to you? Um, just go where you're happy and go where your future is going to be successful. And it's also a really special day in your family, that's right? Oh yeah, happy birthday, Jaden. <laughs> Jaden as well, part of this family, Jaden Sheffield, committed to Georgetown. So a huge day for the Sheffield family. Congratulations, all Noah, congratulations. Thank you. Darren, back to you. Well done, Danny, and congratulations, Mr. Sheffield. Noah committing to Florida State, look at that. I love that. Look at the camaraderie. And we've seen this all week. They all pull for one another. They celebrate one another. And how about that memory? Oh, my goodness. Wow. The day that Gary Sheffield hit home run number 500. Now the tables are turned. Mr. Sheffield, you're the one in the background. Oh, that, just great stuff. Great stuff. Yes, it is. Congratulations to Noah. That's what makes this event fun each and every year as Xavier Rivera will lead things off. Xavier out of Puerto Rico. It's amazing how time goes, whereas that me and <laughs> Sheffield had a chance to win a World Series in 97 and, and just to see his kids and, you know, my kids moving along and I guess it's saying we're getting a little older, I guess. Yes, you are. <laughs> as, you, as you're still dashing men, though. Here's we, Blake Illich. He is from Detroit, Michigan. And if you're curious, if you're a diehard fan, of course, of, let's say, the Red Wings, the Tigers, maybe even you're a Michiganer and you know about the, the Fox Theater, the rebuilding of, of downtown, that's Grandpa. And that is the late Mike Gillich, legendary in Michigan, certainly for all he has given. His dad is a Tonis, and uh, Pat Patria is mom, and there is the legend, Mike Gillich. Blake's grandfather, born in Detroit, Cooley High School, served in the Marine Corps, played in the Tigers organization, and uh, every one of you have had a slice of the other thing that he founded, Little Caesar's Pizza. <laughs> That, that is a legend. That's royalty in Michigan. Oh, no, no doubt Mike about it. No doubt about it. And, and we just think in baseball, oh, the Tigers, but it's so much more than that. And so uh, yeah, this is a very talented young man out of, as we said, University Liggett. He's a ninth grader, Canes National. Little Caesars baseball, his travel team. As a breaking ball drops in there for strike one. That's the history, D. What's the present? Let's let Mr. Well, Illich tell his story. That's a good idea, throwing that first pitch curveball after seeing so many of these hyped up yes. youngsters trying to throw yes. hard. But at his peak, Illich will be, you know, 85, 87 on the fastball. He's pretty polished. You know, you can see he's physically mature. He's already got a feel for dropping the, the curveball in for a strike. But, uh, you know, a young man who's been on the baseball scene for a long time in this age group and, and much in a, in a Cozart sort of way, very polished. A pretty fastball after the breaking ball, well located just off the plate outside. Blake says, my father inspires me to have a great attitude on and off the field. Is that one good pitch in? Buried that one in on the hands. He went on to say, my dad also inspires me to be kind to others, to be respectful. Knowing the challenges that others are dealing with in life, there are some of the exploits in the classroom for Xavier Rivera. Rivera, his first time up, he first pitch swung, line drive to first base. But I want to talk about what the feedback we've been getting from coaches like you, Charles. What an enthusiastic player this is. Just all baseball, baseball, baseball. And it brought a comp to mind because I just read something very recently about Salvador Perez of the Royals and what a great season he's having. But the comp was talking about Dayton Moore, talking about Perez when he was a kid and how he had all enthusiasm. He didn't have the tools yet, but they loved him because of the enthusiasm for the game. And you need that behind home plate. I mean, because catching position is a grueling position. It's a very rewarding position when things go well behind the home plate. But like I talked to the kids before, you can't let your at-bat bring you out on the field as far as calling games and being a great catcher. 
And, um, and those are things that um, a catcher has to possess. Oh, baby, what a hammer. Oh, my goodness, what a good-looking pitch, Mr. Illich. Drops it in there. And we really haven't seen much of that this game. You know, these are 14-year-olds, you know, young 15-year-olds. Having the command of the breaking ball is something that happens down the road, sometimes not even until you're in college or, or pro ball. Illich is a polished right-hander, though, and a, a great pitch there for strike three. Yeah, he's touched 87 miles an hour. The pitch after that, 65 miles an hour. David, 87 down to 65. And that's a good thing. I tell you what, he's been showing great body control uh, with that breaking ball. I mean, he has um, good posture with that breaking ball. On it, follows it right back to the screen. Danny Wexelman, what do you have for us? You mentioned the off speed. He told me specifically that is something he has been working on. He said he walked too many guys last season, Blake, that is, and he wanted to improve that. You guys mentioned the camaraderie you've seen here. Blake told me he admires David Shields, told me that he's going to try to mess with batter's timing with different leg lifts, and he does some stability exercises for that too, guys. So nice job by him today. Yeah, and it's the breaking ball that Danny's talking about that allows him to just pump one right down the middle with a fastball. David, they're thinking about the breaking ball. I think there's no question that Zahn was thinking about a curveball there. He would have been late no matter what. And just couldn't pull the trigger. So back to back, backwards K's. Eddie Zahn goes down on strikes. Good stuff from Mr. Illich. It's not over yet though. There's a talent in Nick Partridge out of Lakeland, Florida. That open stance. There's the pause. And the arm was a little bit, <laughs> a little bit behind there. That's, that's tough to do. Oh, Danny, yes. Danny called that that would happen, by the oh, way. That's yes. tough to do. Oh, yes. You know, that's that's something you see sometimes in the big leagues. Every once in a while with a top pitcher, you know, in the high school age group at the older, it's very rare to see it with these. They have enough trouble repeating their delivery at 14-15 without throwing in timing very uh, changes. Very true. Loves DeGrom. A lot of young pitchers do. Good fastball over the inside. I'll quote him. He said, I like to watch DeGrom because he's dominating on the mound. He can not only throw 100-plus fireballs, he can throw a wicked slider with great off-speed pitches. I learned a lot watching him. And fastball's up and away, three and one the count. What I like about him, he's aggressive in his own. He, 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 he'll come at you, and he's not, a, he's not scared. I love that as a pitcher. Let's see if he can find that zone on 3-1. Breaking ball on 3-1, folks. It's 3-2. and two. Why not throw a 3-1 breaking ball? <laughs> to a left-hander. Matthews waiting on deck. Micah for his chance. Fastball, ground ball, charging, fielding, firing, in time for the out. Outstanding inning and a fine play made to end things by Mason Pike. That is good stuff as well. Oh, Mr. Illich, strong inning.
school. The San Diego Show is his travel team as that one hits the backstop. 1-0 the count. Joey is his dad. Julie is mom. Necker says, my greatest athletic accomplishment to this point in my life is tonight. Being a part of this 2021 Select Festival. And I think he's not alone in feeling like a moment like this. Now they want to build on it. But for many, this may be their greatest moment. Oh, no doubt. And we just saw Necker at what might be another player's biggest moment. He was asked to pitch at the PG Underclass All-American Games three weeks ago in San Diego, sort of as a fill-in with the, with the best 2023s in his class. And he came out two years younger uh, just to throw two innings and was up to 90 and had two nice innings. And it's like, wow, this is a 2025 here. Wow. And so now he has a bat in his hand. That's a great story, David. And I thought he was a primary pitcher. I mean, I'm watching a 2025 throw 90 and throwing strikes and stuff and watching him the last three days. No, he's a third baseman first, I think. I mean, the power is so big. He just bullies balls. You know, Jared Goodwin, our, our scouting director, uses that term. He bullies baseballs. And that's what Vaughn Necker does from the right side of the plate. Necker says, and I quote, as a hitter, I spray line drives all over the field. As a pitcher, four seam, two seam, change up and slider. And that one. Tied him up just enough as he puts it on the ground and to the right side. That one goes. Jacob Kendall is out there to make the play to retire. Vaughn Necker we had a chance to get to know him just a little bit better this time. It brings to mind an interesting subject, Charles, and that's playing up. I'm sure you did it when you were younger. I'm sure there were times when you were whatever the age playing against kids that were two and three years older. What do you remember about those opportunities? Well, I remember playing up a few times, and, and, and my biggest thing my father kept telling me, just play my game. Don't, don't try to do too much trying to play up. Yeah. And, um, and that was very helpful because uh, when I was a young man, as a freshman, I remember coming in high school, and my dad truly felt like I could start as a freshman catcher in high school. And he just told me to go out and play my game and don't think like I'm an older kid or just do what I do, and uh, that was very helpful. It had to help me. your confidence, though. I mean, to survive and succeed against older, that had to help the confidence. Not with your chest out showing it off, but that had to help you, right? <laughs> oh, it definitely helped me out tremendously because you, you sit there and say, okay, you don't know when you get to that level can you really compete against seniors. But when you get put in that situation and, and you succeed, it builds the confidence uh, tremendously. Boston Kellner takes a breaking ball away. David, that brings up an interesting point for the scouts that are watching and college coaches. These athletes in this game, they're all playing with one another, right? And this is that 14U age group. When spring comes around, they're going to try to take jobs of 18-year-old men, seniors in high school, right? Oh, yes. And, and Dimitri Young addressed this last night, actually. He said, I'm a high school coach. This is what you should do. Walk up to your coach on the first day of practice, look him in the eye, and shake him firmly in the hands and say, I'm here to win a job. And, and, uh, and show the coach the respect, but also show him that you're serious about this and that you're confident of your talent. Yes, it means a lot. I mean, when you're a young kid and you're getting put in that situation, that coach want to feel like you are definitely mentally ready for the job. And like Demetri said, when you do that, he's showing that I have the strength to take this job, and, um, and it can be very helpful to a young kid. Demetri Young out there coaching at first base. He's the head coach at Camarillo High School. Is that one in California, by the way? That one is up and away to Ethan Holiday. Wait. Saw so Ethan last time up. He went down on strikes. We've been looking forward to seeing him hit again. Charles Johnson, David Ronsley, Danny Wexelman, Darren Sutton, and you. Thanks for spending time with all of us here at JetBlue Park in Fort Myers, Florida. The winner and spring home of the Boston Red Sox. Oh, got him in the foot. Not going to get to see him hit. Unfortunately, and so the the West team with the chance to make some noise now. Yeah, just right off the top of those yeah. new ballot spikes. And you could see the immediately the body language, the deflating. It's like, I got to go down to first now. <laughs> I can't hit. <laughs> Here's Eric Parker. He didn't get to hit. He was hit by a pitch last time up. Let's watch him hit now. Good pitch, just a little bit low. Sink to that fastball. The South Carolina commit. 
two-time select festival athlete. I'm professional basketball player, sister playing basketball almost her entire oh, life. Oh, There's oh, a good oh, pitch, oh, one oh, and one. Oh, and that's what Booth needs to be doing. He gets some, such nice sync on that fastball. He just needs to, you know, think down in the zone, down the zone. He tends to get under that fastball and miss up. But when he's down in the zone, it has really nice sync. It would be a great time for him to get a ground ball. Yes, it was a great pitch, and he has a tendency, so for whatever reason, is outing here. It seems like he's pulling the ball a little bit too much. He's pulling it, you know, to the, um, to the outside of right-handed hitters. No. That's exactly what happened there. As Charles is saying, two balls and one strike the count to EP. His travel team, the Ohio Warhawks. There's his favorite baseball player. He said, I like him. He can play at shortstop. Has at bats that are great. Two and two the count. I asked Derek, so when I bump into you in 10 years, that means he'll be, what, 24, 25? He said, hopefully, I'll be in the MLB playing for my favorite team, having a beautiful wife and two amazing little boys that also <laughs> have a love for baseball. <laughs> Those are his plans. And with some big plans. Yes, there. I like his vision. Two and two the count. Tiny bit of choke up on that bat. Go, 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 go. Oh, it skips on by. At first slide, aggressively, Kellner goes into third. We saw a change up there. Yes, it looked like a change up. Yeah, pretty much, this, unfortunately, the same mo the uh -huh. same motion and yes. the same getting out, mm -hmm. out too far with the release point. You really, um, you know, as a catcher, you hate to see that. You know, he's been doing a great job behind home plate. But in baseball sense, you always want to keep that double play in order. Yeah. And um, that's very beneficial to the pitcher. Omar Cerna continues to work back there behind the plate. Boy. And that's ball four. So with one out, the base is loaded. Just like that, the West team has a chance to make some noise. Tanyan Sturts may start to open that list of pitchers a little bit early here. Let's see. And he's got some, they have some backups. Cerna, who's catching now, could come in and pitch later on. Well, there's any number of backups possible. And, the, and there's, good, there's obviously no re-entry rules.
thing is, six years ago, we didn't have all the structure of 13, 14 new showcases. And that was just Jeremy and Ben, especially Ben's vision to put this together. Now we're in such a better position to scout a whole broad scope of players than we were six years ago. All right. Carter Smith, we've already seen who he is as an athlete. We know he's a very talented infielder, defensive player of the year, certainly with a great glove. Booth is done on the mound in this one. So Carter out of Cape Coral, Florida. Shortstop pitcher as well. Big swing, fouls that one off. Mason Pike out of Puyallup, Washington. Oregon State commit. Now we got to see Pike make that real nice play at second base earlier. But what I've been looking forward to seeing in this game and have really learned about him this week is he is a the, the, uh, true switch hitter. It's almost equal bat speed from the left and right side, and that is so unusual for players this age. So we'll watch this left side of the batter's box. We'll tell you what kind of a physical athlete he is. He's physical because he's a football, basketball, and wrestling star. Football team's MVP three years in a row, all-league and state champion in wrestling. It's that one a mile high. Back of short. Put away out there on an infield fly. Ethan Murray, the shortstop. There's Ethan. Mason Pike. You know, this is a physical, physical athlete. I love the fact that it's a big time wrestler. That I, I'm I'm hearing more and more of that <laughs> the last few years, with wrestling being a sport that these young top athletes are pursuing. And as long as the, the weight lifting inherent in that, and plus some of those upper body injuries you can suffer in wrestling, it's a, it certainly teaches you the competitiveness. It really does. I, I never knew that. I never knew young kids would get into wrestling um, like that. And mixed baseball, right? And mixed baseball yeah. in it. If you're wrestling, <laughs> you probably think you're kind of wrestling or football. But uh, you're exactly right. That's a strike. One and one to count to Sean Gamble out of Iowa. Had a great college tennis player. As that one bounces wow, in there. How about great that pounce? <laughs> oh, man. Great pounce, Charles, man, behind the plate. i tell you what, this kid has great mobility behind home plate. It's hard to teach that. I mean, those are instinct. That's an instinct play there. And that low, lower half agility. I love watching catchers come out of the crouch yes. and how they, they come out of the crouch and it's so much more important than pop times and some right. of the other things we measure just watching how the uh, catcher's lower body works and boy did it work well there. Omar Serna still working behind the plate. In on the hands on the ground ranging to his left turning it into an out outstanding play. Jacob Kendall covered all sorts of ground he's played short he's played third he'll play right later on what a great athlete
The great platform for baseball being provided by Perfect Game. And this evening, it's at the 14U Age Group at the 14U Perfect Game Select Festival. And up and on that platform is the SoCal guys out of South Hills High School, Glendora, California. USA Prime National, his travel team, is sophomore this 2024 at South Hills High School where he plays for head coach Darren Murphy. His name is Noah Malone. He's had an interesting summer too, by the way. He's played for several teams at the 14U age group, but he's also jumped up for juggernaut baseball, David, and played in 17U events as well. Wow. You're, what you're going to see here, look, look at that bite. Look at the size and the, and the hips. He's got those power muscles where, where so many great power pitchers have. And he's a he's an upper 80s guy right now. Um, and with that body, you can see him adding more. Uh, mostly fastballs now. But uh, a young man who all this week seems to be having as much fun as everybody. I think he dreams of being a middle infielder. He's always out in the middle infielder working out with the middle infielders. He went to 14U National Showcase, and as an infielder, he did throw 90. So I'm sure the, the dream is backed up by a strong arm at that same 14U National Showcase. He touched 88 on the mound as a pitcher. Again, Southern California, South Hills High School, and an LSU commit. A little bit of late dive to that fastball, 2-1. and one to Micah Matthews. Now he's a South Carolina commit. These two, if they make it to college, will see one another in the SEC. Just a quick reminder for all you casual baseball fans, that's a verbal commitment, and then you put pen to paper your senior year, then it becomes real, right, Charles? Then it becomes real. I mean, um, we can all say what's going to happen, and but when it comes time, that's when it's going to happen. I... Um, Miami for you? My, well, you know, I, I I committed to Miami, and and pretty much I didn't make, I didn't want to go nowhere else, nowhere else but Miami. I didn't take no visits but Miami, and I knew right then I was going to be a hurricane regardless. And even my first year, I never did catch my first year. I played first base. You still had a bunch of homers, though, didn't you? Yeah, I had a few home runs, yeah. and, and you know, here's a here's a, a fact that I pretty much owned the triples record in Miami for probably about. 15 years, 20 years, the triples. Hey, guys in the truck, I think there's something wrong with my, my <laughs> headphones. I don't know if you heard that. I think Charles just said triples. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. Look at you wheels over there. That one is high and inside. That's ball four, so he loses him. Micah Matthews is on with a walk. But of course, it's changed so much just in the last five, six, seven years is that kids are committing so much younger than they used to be. You know, back when 10 years ago, maybe, you would never hear of a freshman, a 14-year-old committing. And now we're doing it on national TV during the game, and it's not exceptional. So that's, And that's just helped drive the game of baseball at this level and perfect yes. game. Picking up events like this and putting emphasis on this age group coincided with that push in college baseball to recruit younger and younger, much like they do in the other major sports already. Yes, that's true. I mean, football been doing it for a long time, and, and, and it drives a lot of excitement to college. And uh, I see now baseball is definitely doing it. Matthews walks. Nolan Traeger takes a strike to even the count at 1-1, one and one, the catcher out of Spring, Texas. And the TCU commit the son of Aaron and Jim. He's been a part of USA Baseball's 15U National Team Trials, 13U Select Festival athlete. Older brother Jax is committed to TCU. Which is pretty cool. Good breaking ball, but it's in and off the plate. That had some tight spin on yeah, it. There was some tight spin on that. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking like, what was that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, boy. He throws that for a strike. I'm in trouble. And you've got a catcher, too, right? He's, he's used to recognizing yeah. quality pitches. He goes back to a fastball that was put on the ground, again, with a little bit of tilt to it, leaving his feet trying to find that one. Mr. Parker gave it his best go over there. The 
He's missing in the lefties a lot. Missing in the lefties a lot. Two and two the count. Come on, I'll put my right here, kid. Right here. We're talking about those events in which Malone played up. He played a perfect game 17 UBCS tournament, juggernaut baseball. That's an event played here as the breaking ball is inside. That's a stolen base for Micah Matthews. Malone played in that one, had a bunch of on base opportunities, took advantage, had a couple of walks, had a double, played up again in the West Memorial Day Classic. 17 U age group pitched well. And then also had a 429 on base. So, gosh, taking on that 17 U, that's, those are seniors, rising seniors. But then David going back and playing in the big events for the 14 U age group, the MLK event. He was an all-tournament team member of 14U National Elite event for USA Prime, so he's he's been busy. Trigger has shown us such a nice, smooth left-handed swing at the plate so far. Just looking for that pitch over the plate. I'll tell you, you're you watching this kid, um, um, Malone here. He has a lot of, like, life on his ball. I mean, his fastball, his breaking ball. I mean, he, if he keeps around the zone, I mean, he's going to be, he just, he, he can be tough to hit. That one is high. That one is a ball four. What do you see, David, as a scout? Hit, that's pretty clean as long as he stays directional, stays under control. You know, he's not missing by much. You know, it's not a release point thing, but I think in that delivery, thinking a little more about it, you can see the athleticism and that strength in the lower half that's yes. driving that delivery. Yes. Not comfortable, wants to reset the signs. He'll call them out. We were talking about big upcoming events for perfect game once the fall rolls around the final events of the year at the high school age group travel ball tournaments and the pinnacle is the first big week of october the perfect game worldwood bat association world championship played in jupiter florida and those are 80 plus travel teams the best in the country really and that's one of the big last times for the draft class of next year to play travel ball with their teammates otherwise high school's up next and it's an event that, that gets such spectacular participation by the scouts, by the college coaches, by the ages. I mean, you'll have probably combined those three things. You'll have 12, 1,500 people there. You'll have hundreds and hundreds of golf carts wandering around 13 fields. It's a true spectacle. Nice job racing in and putting that one away, Slade. Caldwell, Slater eight out there makes the play. No, you're right, and if you don't, no Jupiter's complex. It's the complex shared with the Cardinals and the Marlins, so they share it together. So think of a stadium, but then quads everywhere, quads and clover leaves of, of fields, and then think of each scout that's there getting his own golf cart. So we're not exaggerating when we say three to four hundred golf carts, including staff members and some MLB GMs that come. It's hard to describe unless you've been there. It starts early in the morning. It's about a five or a six day event. Goes late into the night. Teams play to win. There's no doubt. It's not just a showcase. Hugely competitive. Hugely competitive. And so that will be here in a couple of weeks. If you happen to be in the hood, down there and just north of Miami, the West Palm area, head on over to that. I mean, it's literally worth your time. Yeah, Charles, you're about yeah, an hour south. Yeah. That's yeah. south. Yeah, yeah, I'm come up and visit. I'm, yeah, I'm in for a lot of it. I'm about to come up. I I mean, it has to be a great platform for these young kids to be in one location with so many scouts and college coaches. Well, significantly there, we saw Noah Malone land that curveball, and we have Everett Johnson at the plate, who's got some of the best bat control, and he was completely flummoxed by that breaking ball. It was so yes, tight, it was tight really and tight. late. It was like, you know, it was a bad, bad offering at the ball, and you'll almost never see that from Everett Johnson. There's a breaking ball that he waves right through, nearly loses his helmet. Just got a piece of it, actually. 
And just to finish the thought on that event in Jupiter, should you want to swing by if you're in that part of the world, best travel teams in the country really gathered October 7th through the 11th in Jupiter, Florida, Roger Dean Complex. Make it part of your plans. It's an incredible event. That breaking ball misses up and away just to put one last bow on it. How incredible has it been in its history? Nearly 19,000 college commits have come out of that event and an alumni of 935 MLB players. That's incredible. That one's up and away. First time I ever saw Mike Trout was in Jupiter. Back before he was even, he wasn't a perfect game All-American even. He developed so much between when he was a 17-year-old and by the end of his senior year and then in playing in the big leagues as a 19-year-old. It was an absolute, absolutely incredible transformation. Hmm. Into center field, you talk about that approach. That's a line drive. That's a nice play made out there in center field. But Papano goes down, hauls that one in, and then all of a sudden there's a couple of outs on that play as it's turned into a pair. Still love the approach, though, by Everett Johnson. Papano's good defense took it away. Perfect Game Select Festival. Enough about us up here. Danny Wexelman has a special guest on the field. D. I've got the guy who's always smiling, Dimitri <laughs> Young. Look, there it is. It's so great. Dimitri, former 13-year veteran of the game, two-time All-Star. You're a coach. You're an uncle. You're a fan favorite. How much fun are you having out here? You know what? I'm having the time of my life down here. You know, in years past, I was up there in the booth with Darren. Hey, Darren. What's up, CJ? But I'm down here in action. This is fun. You've been passing on your wisdom, everything you know about the game. I know you're an open book. What are some of the things you're passing on to these guys? Well, I've told these kids they're advanced, so you just need to learn the, the smaller things that go on in baseball and have some fun out here. You know, I tell these kids this is where the pizza and ice cream part ends and the, I got to make the varsity team. I got to get to college and all that. That's where it begins. But right now, have fun. I see the West team trying to mount a comeback here in this game. What do you see? Oh, I see the same thing. We're scratching and clawing, you know. But, um, you know, we still have plenty of ball left, and uh, we got some capable ball players. How impressed are you by this class, by the way, the 14U Select Fest, our last one of the season? These kids are outrageously good. They are real good. They're real talented. <clears throat> Sometimes I forget they're 14. That's how good they are. Dimitri, thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome, Danny. Darren, back to you. Yeah, good stuff. We love Dimitri Young. Somebody's reminded, by the way, that you know he's not playing at three bills like when he played. He's now like lost like a whole bunch of weight. He he can give that triple extra large top he's got back. He's he's now lean and mean. He it's amazing the career he had as a big guy. And he talked about that last night. He said I didn't do everything I could have, but then he stepped from behind the podium and said, but now I look good. <laughs> Come on, Meat Hook, you can give that one back. You you go with like a large now. You're so lean. I tell you what, the way he hit. I wouldn't change anything. Either, <laughs> I, I know. I, I get it. Michael Torres, guys, we've seen him work with a bat in his hand, David. Now he works as a pitcher. Torres out of Miami, Florida, flashes a very good breaking ball to Massa Chilcutt for strike one. And that's the thing with Torres I mentioned earlier. He really wasn't a pitcher last year at, at the 13U Festival. There was no consideration for him taking the mound, I believe. But he's developed so much, and that curveball has really been his out pitch in, in, in terms of his development. Mikey is a Miami commit, and then Massa, who he is dealing with, still making his decision. All kinds of choices about where he may play his college baseball. And sweeping slider misses down and inside. Michael going into his freshman year at Doral Academy Prep. Elite squad, 15U national team, his travel team. 
Good fastball. Dots the outside corner for a strike. He was a gold medal winner for Team USA at the Pan American Games. And then made the 13 U Select Festival and won the MVP. That's right, Holiday. That's what happened. <laughs> told there's a trivia question for us in 1188 MLB games how many triples did Charles Johnson have by the way Charles Johnson for many years according to Charles Johnson the Miami record holder for triples and so there's your question and we'll see Massa trot out to first base I had nothing to do with this Charles <laughs> do you happen to know the answer to the question um, I tend to say Maybe one or zero. Okay. <laughs> but again, a quick reminder that at Miami, for a long time, he was the record holder. Yes. The college Miami. Yes. Not the big league Miami. We'll wait for the answer here a little bit later on in the broadcast. Don't look it up, by the way. We had Andrew Jones looking up, confirming his own record last night during the banquet. <laughs> Yes, you are, Andrew, the youngest home run hitter in the history of the World Series. Is that one a sliced foul? Took it right out of the catcher's mitt. By the way, and the answer to our great trivia question, four. Wow. Four. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and you obviously can't remember the details of any of them. <laughs> it must have been a couple of errors mixed in with that one because I don't know. <laughs> I, I would have never guessed that right. That's outstanding stuff. Speedy CJ. Breaking ball. Got away with one up. Luke made a nice play in the outfield in the last half inning. The pride of Cincinnati, Ohio. The five-star national star. He, too, was chosen, and it was an honor to be a part of USA Baseball's ADP program. Loves being ranked by PG. Chosen for this select festival. Breaking ball, swung right through, throw down on a hop, and that's a stolen base. Skip that one in there. Xavier Rivera doing the catching. So Xavier gets a chance to catch for three innings now. And a strikeout. Here's Eli Pitts. You know, these events are really tough, um, being a catcher like that, because number one, you don't really know the pitcher very well, and number two, the pitcher's really focused on trying to throw, you know, strong velocity at home plate, and there's no, you know, no, they're not really trying to hold runners on. Right. And so it becomes very difficult to throw out runners. Breaking ball, and that one lifted foul off the bat of Pitts. Just to close the book on the great story about the triples that Charles Johnson hit. You know, unforgettable stories. He hit one in 95. Charles, you hit one in 96, and then in 97. And the final triple in your career came in 1999 when you're a member of the Baltimore Orioles. 1999, that was the, the final triple of your career. Wow. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> And they all were early on in my career, so you know I got really slow later on, I guess, huh? September 17th, it was a beautiful night in Southern California at the Big A. <laughs> and he was playing in that orange and black on September 17th, 1999. It was then known as Edison Field back then. And his Baltimore <laughs> Orioles were victorious by a score of 4-2. to two. And in that game, Charles Johnson was 4-4-4 four, four, four with the triple. Brady Anderson didn't have any triples in that game. Man. That one swung right through. And down goes Eli Pitts. Good stuff from Torres. Yeah, Torres had set that up with a changeup earlier in the at-bat. So he's going to go back to the fastball. We already seen the big breaking ball. Yes. He showed the changeup. So Pitts was a, really in a guessing situation yes. right there. And that ball had great life on it. Left on left opportunity. As a matter of fact, just to really put the book on the shelf now and close it up. 
Charles had such a great night that night as part of his win. Batting in the nine spot was four for four. He was a homer shy of the cycle against Jared Washburn in that game. Mm. Jack Ruckert, the pride of Louisiana. On the ground. Down to a knee, pops right back up, makes a fine play there at second base. Eddie Zorn right now, the second baseman. Puts that one away. 8-5 to score. Good stuff out there from the left-hander, Michael Torres. The Perfect Game Select Festival on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players. Rawlings, the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball. By New Balance Baseball, proud partner of the Perfect Game Select Fest. And by Perfect Game Cares, growing the game for America's underserved youth. We're certainly glad that we didn't see any of this thus far this evening. It's so beautiful on the bay, on the Gulf here in Fort Myers. And Perfect Game's great relationship with the folks of Fort Myers, the community, and the two big league spring training ballparks here. And it's time to go to work. We were talking about him earlier, the great athleticism of Vaughn Necker. Uh, San Diego show, Marietta, California. David, you mentioned that he had a great honor of playing up a couple of years the underclass all-american games yeah just very impressive not so not as much for the physical ability come out and throw 90 but for the the composure and the maturity that he showed during that um because that's a big deal event it's at the university of san diego it's very heavily scouted it's co sort of like the preview of the next year's all-american team so it's the highest level talent and and he was you know ice cold ice cold blood and came out and did his job and and probably most of the players didn't even know that he was a 14-year-old. And so here he goes. He talked about the challenge of COVID and the shutdown in California. He said, it took me a long time just to start to play competitively anywhere. He said, I decided during that break to work two times as hard and become the best version of myself. Michael Torres, who just pitched, has a bat in his hands and looks at a firm fastball over the inside corner. 0-1 oh, the count. Hello. The pretend radar gun. That was far from slow. That was 85, <laughs> folks. That's good stuff, though. Good humor. Points for humor there. But one thing you note, especially from this angle, is how compact that arm action is. And if you're a hitter, you're not seeing a lot of baseball before it comes out of his hand. That's true. Scorch to center field on the move, hurrying on around is Michael Torres. Here he goes. He's thinking three. Turn and burn. Head first slide. It's a triple for Michael Torres. 
Well, I was looking forward to seeing Torres swing the bat. He walked his first two times up. He's coming off a great inning on the mound. He's got that adrenaline flowing, and he showed it there. That was a, a bolt to center field. A, a triple, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> It sure was. I tell you what, I mean, it was a great piece of hitting there. And, um, oh, yes, I mean, he went down and stayed with that ball. And, and you can tell when he when he um, got to third base, he was fired up. You heard the patent, let's go. And by the way, those first couple of pitches, let's tick it up a couple of notches, David. Those first couple of pitches, first three were 89 miles an hour. Wow. It's a 14-U game, folks. But that breaking ball, hello, strike one. Yeah, that's a hard slot to throw a breaking ball from. And, and, and Darren, you remember at the All-American Classic, we had a big right-hander from Southern California as well, Jaden Newt, who yep. was, I believe, up to 95, 96, pretty much from that same arm slot. And uh, it's just so hard on a, on a hitter, especially a right-handed hitter, just not seeing the baseball. Yeah, I mean, he, he, just, he kind of throws it like he's a uh, middle infielder in a sense. And uh, it has to be very tough to pick up. That fastball just off the plate. He's got up this motion for me, D. Well, this isn't really the angle to see it, but look at the uh, at at the compact arm. It's that, not that long offline arm action back we've seen from some other pitchers. It just stays compact. Yeah, you had I had a feeling that would happen. You got an athlete on the mound, and hopefully coming in, Michael Torres. Hopefully he's all right. It took a head first slide. Now he's curled up just a bit. And grabbing hold of the hand, I believe, but we'll see. He got spiked. Newt, um, excuse me, uh, Necker came down on his hand. And you see so many kids now wearing that mitt yes. on their hands to prevent something yes. like this from happening. Yeah, play together at the plate. The head first slide, hand and spikes came together. It's always tough. You hit first slide. Hope he's okay. Oh, yes. He stepped right on his hand. Ouch. I know back in the days when I was working with the uh, with the Houston Astros, there was an automatic $100 fine for sliding home, head first into home plate yes. in the minor league system. Wow. They wanted nothing to do with the injuries that can, can, can come from that situation. Yes. A lot can happen on the head first slide at home plate. I mean, you really, um, a lot of times you're at the mercy of a catcher sliding head first because he has all the catching gear. Oh, yeah. And he's not going to back down from you. No. And his job's to block it, actually, here. Hands out there. And by the way, we see the change in top velocity. D, a couple of pitches ago, he touched 90 miles an hour. Wow. Ah, oh, man, it had to hurt. Danny Wexelman, you've got a little bit more. What do you have for us? Before he could even make it to the dugout, trainer waiting here right now. So the trainer's wrapping him up, maybe getting some ice. But he looks like he's going to be okay, guys. You know he's tough. But the trainer's met him here, so he's he's taking care of him. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you, D. I saw the bag of ice ready. That ice is going to feel like heaven on that hand. I mean, if ever ice has felt yes. better, get it on that hand right now. <laughs> Usually don't like ice in the extremities, but now's the time. Yes, it is. Donovan Jeffrey has a 2-2 count flamethrower on the mound, and that breaking ball just stuck in his hand as it heads to the backstop. Yeah, fastball, David, 89-90, and it's physical. It's funny you, you talked about Newt. Now, you casual fans aren't supposed to know that, but the talented PG All-American from Southern California, they're kind of similar in their physicality, too. Oh, yeah, Newt, 6'4", 235, and you could see him at you know three years ago maybe being Von Necker's size. But a, a real tight comp there. Bouncing ball, fielding, firing, dug out at first base. How about that? A nice play, shooting it on across the diamond. Eric Parker looked to his first baseman, Cam Caminetti, and he helped him out. We've seen a number of nice plays yes, by first baseman yes. today, and you look at the technique on that, how he's down below the ball and, and uh, the footwork's there. Parker, as I mentioned, there's a couple of you know, plays, but, you know, Cam nice. down, getting down under the he ball. He really work, got under the ball. Yeah, work from the ground up. But, yeah, you middle infielders, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Michael Torres, by the way, just a quick update. As that one sails up and away, was slated to have one more chance to play defensively in center field. So we'll see if he's all right. Get out there and play. 
Yeah, just focus your inner Sean Dunstan and make that throw across. <laughs> Throw like a hundred miles an hour, right? <laughs> yeah, your Ken Caminetti, your your uh, Sean Dunstan. <laughs> Jacob Kendall takes a good-looking breaking ball to have things even up at one and one. The National Player of the Year out of St. Augustine, Florida. As that fastball jumps out, he said, "When you run into me in ten years, I'll be a professional baseball player." I'll be in the big leagues winning home run derbies and I'll be signing autographs as well. Jacob will be taking time to sign autographs. Tied him up with a breaking ball. That's strike two. It's a great back and forth on social media. A perfect game alum, by the way. Marcus Stroman, who was a shortstop and a pitcher as a PG player when he was their age. Finding out about a young man, little guy. And Marcus is a little guy. He'll tell you that on social media. Saw it. They sent the word through social media. Said, I'll be out in a minute. Signed his jersey through social media. Made him proud. Marcus, by the way, would have loved that inning. The inning by the power-throwing right-hander, Vaughn Necker. Eight to five is the score. What oh, beautiful Fort Myers. Glad to have you back with us. Heartbeat of amateur baseball all summer long, all into the fall, and at this great complex here at Jet Blue Park. G form, play of the game, hammered, and I mean hammered. High off that wall, he got extended, and he crushed that baseball. It was fun watching him do it. The big power of Omar Cerna. And Charles, I would say, in your opinion, as a former gold glove catcher, that's maybe his third best play of the game, actually. Uh, yes. I tell you what, he made some great blocks, um, blocks that are very reactionary blocks. You can't teach that. And, um, but to do the work behind home plate and hit that double, oh, that's just very rewarding as a catcher. Coy James, we have seen him work with the bat in his hands already. He goes to work on the mound. James singled in a run a couple of innings ago. He faces a talented two-way player in his own right. As a matter of fact, the player of the year. In the two-way category, Cam Caminetti. James fires a fastball for a strike to Cam. Cam's second opportunity to swing the bat. And the breaking ball sails up and stays out of there. I think the one player in my last three decades of baseball experience that stood out as a two-way player for any number of reasons was Zach Greinke. 
because Zach Greinke Ooh. wanted to be a position player so badly. Mm -hmm. I've seen him catch before. I mean, okay. that's he want because he he couldn't run at this age, but he could do everything else. But he so much wanted to be a position player, but he just got too good on the mound, basically. Uh -huh. James as a two-way player flashing right there. Good fastball. Just location, location here with James Early. That's got some run on yeah, it. Yeah, nice run on it. And the pitch before looked like it was like maybe three or four inches in. Uh -huh. And and James, I don't know, I think it might have been intent by intent. Said, hey, let me move this out just a little bit. Breaking ball hits the inside corner for strike one. Yeah, you can see the process going yes. here. Move the ball off the plate. Okay, well, get me over breaking ball for the, the big power hitter. Q didn't mean to, but Quentin Young puts it on the ground. Roll to the right side. The athlete gets over there quickly. And Quentin Young out of Camarillo, California, is retired. Jeffrey fed the pitcher coming. That's a couple of times he's done that. Yes, he's done a pretty good job over there. Um, Make some good plays. And I think that's just a matter of location again, because that's not a pitch that Parker was going to be able to handle. He decided, but just a little bit too late. Yes, yeah, it's, it's almost or, like, me, the, like the ball got up on him faster than he thought it would. Camden Cluett out of Yorba Linda, California, the survey product. Looks at a strike. Brothers are checking him out. Wyatt is 13. Dean is 11. Three boys in the house. You think they might look up to their big brother? I think they <laughs> might. They might. Mom Allison, God bless you, Mom. All those boys running around. All in that three-year window. That one misses outside. Mom, by the way, we were speaking of her earlier, an outstanding college volleyball player. Dad, a college soccer player. This young man, by the way, Cluett, really, really good behind the plate, but a great student. National Honor Society as he takes high from James. That's ball four. As he trots to first, he does so with a 4.8 GPA thus far. He's taking honors classes. Yes, that's yes. up above that's that 4.0. Well. So good for Camden. Keep it up. As those classes get tougher, keep it up. Here's Noah Franco. Want to know the count, Noah? You saw Noah pitch earlier in this game. Out of Downey, California. Left handed pitcher, but talented enough to earn the right to hit, too, David. Well, that's sort of been the theme of these last few innings is the two-way aspect, and it's very fitting in a game like this that honors the best baseball players of this age group in the country that you see these two-way players. High sky center field. Staying with it and putting it away is Everett Johnson. We'll step aside. That's a two-way man that looks strong on the mound, Mr. James.
Charles, David, Danny, Darren, and you, and Yeti. We love Yeti. Yeti built for the wild. 8-5, the East on top of the 14U Select Festival. CERN has been great behind the plate. He also belted one nearly out of here over the monster. David Kendall, the player of the year, has played like it. In Booth, the one for two single run, hopped up on the mound. Nyan's a, a great catcher with big power, Gamble Ruckert. And now we give way to a gentleman who has, again, proven he can do a lot of special things. We've seen him in the outfield, Connor Griffin. We'll now see Connor Griffin go to work on the mound. He is out of Mississippi Knights Nation, his travel team. Well, Connor hasn't had a chance to do it with his bat or his glove or his, his feet yet. Let's see what he can do with his arm. Um, he just saw from watching him warm up there, he really gets that 6-3 frame down the mound a long, long way. Has been up to 91 this summer with the fastball. So. His older brother, Cannon, a junior pitcher at Florence High School. He said, I've learned a lot watching him develop. And when brother's a pitcher, younger brother can pitch as well as he blazes one in there for strike one. That looked like a man's fastball right there. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> Charles and I looked at each other like, whoa, what was that? A couple of firm fastballs back to back. So Smith, that first pitch was 90 miles an hour, watch, by the way. Watch how far he gets down the mound, that oh, wow. stride out. And yes. he gets out in front of that leg still. I'd love to see the extension, the, the track man numbers on that extension. That one is high and inside. One and two the count. The first two fastballs were 90 miles an hour. That's a nice matchup. The number two player in the class and the number three player in the class. Just off the plate outside. This kid is a, he's a true athlete, man. He's a strong kid. Talking about Connor Griffin dealing with Carter Smith. To the right side, fights it off, it's down for a base hit. Smith with a single, the great middle infielder, the fine defender, wins that battle that time. I'll tell you what, it was, a, it was a great pitch, but it was a, a better piece of hitting. I don't think Smith is going to care when he looks in the box no, score. And it has, it, oh, um, Dad, that, that, that went 120 feet over the first baseman's head. I, like, can take, no. I can take one of those per game. Yes. Mr. Kozar looking on. He's very impressed. By the way, the top fastball that was a couple of pitches ago was a ball up to 91 miles an hour. Yeah, this is a 14-U game, folks. Is that one dots the outside corner. And it is strike one to Ethan Murray. Yolanda, his mom, Eric, his dad. His older brothers are Elijah and EJ. Runner on the move, played on a backhand there. Tied him up just a little bit. I think we had a little, little confusion there, right? A little cross up yeah, there. Yeah, I, I think he was looking for something else. Lots of chill cut is behind the plate doing the catching. And they'll talk it over now. He was looking for a breaking yeah, ball. Yeah, he was looking for a breaking ball there. And that's impressive. He got his glove on exactly. and kept it in front of him. Yeah, a lot of times, unfortunately, Charles, you've been there. You end up wearing that one. Yes, either you or the umpire. Yeah, it looked like he, um, he was expecting something else. So here in the ninth inning, with the E squad in red trying to add on. We're seeing some serious flames coming out of this right arm. Again. Good fastball, one and two the count. Carter Smith out there at second base. Last pitch, 89 miles an hour, getting the swing and miss. Oh. 
blew it right by him. Down he goes on strikes. He battles right back after losing the battle. These are a bunch of elite players, David, battling the last couple of at-bats. And I've never thought about Connor Griffin as a pitcher before right now because he's so, so athletically yes. talented. You don't want to. But, but this is impressive. Very impressive. I tell you, I'm watching him right now, and I'm, my mind is, is going, and he looks like a, to me like a young Kevin Brown. He has that body built like Kevin Brown almost. That's a great call. If you're not aware of who he is for our younger viewers, go look him up. He threw really hard. He had, he had some guns coming out of that jersey. And, of course, one of your teammates for a while, right, yeah. with the Marlins? Yeah. A little spin oh, wow. to look at the runner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, he had to laugh off that one. <laughs> Connor with an exhale goes to work. Breaking ball misses outside. That's a good take right there. Because that is one heck of a pitch. Runner goes to third. Wow, Fire down. Wow. Did he get the tag? He, yes, did. he did. Come on around. Chilcutt got it there. There was some help out there behind him. Eric Parker did a nice job hanging around, putting that tag down. Well, we saw this in the inter squad game yesterday with Masa Chilcutt. Watch his footwork here and how quickly he gets out from behind Harris. That was excellent. Eddie. An absolute Unbelievable strike. great throw. Let's watch this footwork again. Yes. He gave himself some, some space real quickly, and, and he made a throw. This West squad trying to get back in the dugout. They're down three. A great little drama there for you, David. Yes. Aiden Harris, Cuba, out of Virginia. That one's outside. He doesn't describe why his nickname is Cuba, does he? He doesn't. He doesn't. Interesting nickname, though. Back to the screen it goes. He was on that one. He loves Vlad Jr. I do know that. The energy and the aggressiveness of his swing. That was a Vladdy like energetic, aggressive swing there. Got three more, two strikes. The one thing you've seen, you just noticed it there at the 14 U All-American level, are more braces in these games. Breaking ball, a little bit low. Ooh, Ooh, that's that was a good, a good take. take. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good take. Harris draws the walk. He probably couldn't explain why he took that. There's just some <laughs> synapse in his mind that fired and says, that's not what it appears to be. Yes. That's just instinct and reaction. Cerna, a single, a double. His double was nearly a homer, high off the wall in left field. Omar, who's out of Parallel, Texas. He's a catcher. He's a pitcher. He's a third baseman. Omar is from Adobe High School. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike the count. I don't know where the votes are at, you know, where the MVP votes are at, but being tabulated right now. That one skips away. Runner had already taken off, so that'll be a stolen base. Two and one the count. And it's three and one. When Griffin was eight years old, in a pretty serious accident. He was on a go-kart, ran into a steel guy wire. 
He had some really serious facial injuries, almost 100 stitches. Came back from it, gave him a huge scare as that one has popped to the right side. How much does he like baseball? Well, he played in a tournament about three weeks later. The scar is now barely noticeable today, but he, he begged and pleaded the man on the mound to get back and play after going through such a scary act. You know, parents, that's that's a mom. That's scary. Yes. But mom share with us, look, he can hardly notice it. I do notice the fastball, though. I mean, that's easy to notice. This is a man that can play anywhere on the field. He's got a really bright future. Touching 91 miles an hour. Incredible stuff. Secondary pitcher. Great gathering this game with big leaguers all around teaching the sport, and we do know there was one big guy, Canyon Sturtz, out of Massachusetts. He was a young man, but then he broke into the big leagues, and off he went. He's down teaching tonight. Danny, you're with him. Take it away. Thank you, Darren. I do have Tanyan. Tanyan, former right-handed pitcher, major league vet. He brings so much to this game, to this team. What did you tell them before this game to pump them up? I told them throw strikes. Let's get ahead and uh, let's see what happens. We have great arms on our team, um, so they could, you can see that tonight. And we did a pretty good job so far. We got three more outs, though. So you know. three more outs. You're up right now by three. We're in the bottom of the ninth. What are you feeling as the coach of this East team? Well, I'm a little nervous because this is his second inning right now. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully, he can get a couple quick ones here, and we can get out of here quick. How impressed are you by not only your team, but all the guys here this weekend, 14 you select best? It always amazes me coming to this and see how good these kids really are at this age. It's, it's amazing, um, way ahead of what I was. So it's amazing to watch the, the growth and how, how big they are. They're huge, and uh, it's always great to come. Danian, thank you. Thank you for having me. Darren? Yeah, great stuff. Thank you, Danny. He was uh, a cub breaking in in 1995. His career ended. More than a decade later as a Dodger, stops along the way with the Yankees, Toronto, Tampa, and the White Sox as well. And he's talking about, David, uh, another little run for the very well-rounded athlete, Coy James. If you're going to extend someone, this seems to be the guy to do it. He's just a nice, easy motion strike thrower. Yeah, there's not a lot of, lot of effort here. Um, there's a lot of athleticism. Oh. That big, big break and get me over curveball for strike one. What you really want to see here is, as a player, as a, as a manager, is strike one. Yes. That, that first pitch strike. Slade Caldwell, the gifted Slade oh, go, Caldwell, go, 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 go. puts it on the ground. Boy, you had better hurry. It's played at the waist. Firing on a cross, not in time. That's a great effort there, certainly. But what are you going to do when you have that speed? Noah Sheffield, the shortstop, did all he could. And that's a play that Noah will learn as he gets a little bit older. There's no way you can let that ball bounce twice because you're, you're dead. You've got, got to get it on you that first hop. got to come get hop. that first hop, yes. Still made a bit of a Still play. Still made it close, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he's probably thinking right now, if I don't charge that ball, at least take that chance. Yeah. Line drive, left field, down for a base hit. Hurrying on around, Cason Cunningham with a big aggressive turn. Trying to fight their way back. They're down by three. The West squad. Caldwell, single. Cunningham, single. One more look at this swing. And this is this is a Cason Cunningham swing right there. Gets the foot down on time. Oh. Heads down through the ball. Yes. All barrel. Great piece of hitting. And I know they're down three runs, but they do have maybe the two best base runners in this class already out on base. I like that. I like that. Connor Griffin jumped on a breaking ball. This is the man who was on the mound a moment ago, touching 91 miles an hour.
Let's go, Connor. Come on, man. Come on, Connor. Hey, jump on him right now. You're on, kid. Let's go. I know, KG. Put a wall in front of that one. Nice job by Rivera. Xavier. Keeping that breaking ball right up yeah, front. He made that look easy, right? Not too much. Not a lot. Let's go, KG, baby. Come on, Connor. Line drive. Foul ball a couple of times. He's had a hard time staying back. squad trying to put this game to bed the west squad the awards dinner last night the west squad was they were into it they were ready for today definitely more vocal the one two popped up right side not an easy play coming over doing everything he can the pitcher in the first baseman rare is it you'll see a pitcher make a run at a play like that but that's a an athlete as well it's not an easy play at all. Donovan Jeffrey actually had the yeah, better had chance better at that. that one, yes. I think he was worried about Sean Moss yeah. coming in there because Moss wasn't going to do much to get out of the way of that. Moss, the on-deck hitter. The one-two. Got him. Chased the fastball up and out of the zone. It looked good elevated. Griffin goes down on strikes. We've been seeing this all game, that fastball up. Yeah, I think he really wanted to drive that running. All right, Dean Moss, after a chase of an 83 mile an hour fastball, runners go. And it's a stolen base, a double steal. Xavier Rivera did all he could to get it out of his glove. I'm not sure if he does get it out clean if he gets either runner. Here's a look, Charles. Yeah, he couldn't get a grip on the baseball. All right. All right. Sometimes it's best just to hold the ball at that point because it's a tough play when you can't get a grip on the baseball. One ball and one strike the count. Breaking ball. Is up and away. Two and one the count. Runners on second and third. A three run lead. Three and one. Ah, that MVP honor. That'll be handed out. Maybe it hasn't been determined yet. Well, you never know. Bases are full. The tying runs are on. All right, a quick gathering on the mound, the East squad. Xavier Nyans. I'm told that if needed, if needed, Cerna could pitch or Jeffrey could pitch. It's very unofficial, David. Because it's actually in the rules that if this game is tied after nine, we will play a tenth inning under the PG extra inning rules, which involves a lot more than Major League Baseball is doing in extra innings. <laughs> Trust me. What is it? Bases loaded, 3-0 count? Bases loaded, one out. Over the outside corner, it's a strike. Is it serious? You're serious? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. It's made for some fun playoff baseball over the years. Breaking ball a little bit up. Xavier Nyans. The X-Man. No. Doesn't chase. Three and one the count. Let's go. 
James working quickly. That one is high. That's ball four. And here's Vaughn Necker. Seven run home. <laughs> Big physical, aggressive athlete. Throws hard on the mound. SoCal guy, the San Diego show. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2 the count. It's a great shot of Tanya and Sturts because they're kind of similarly built. <laughs> Big physical guys. I love this. Just to focus. Let's go. Let's do this. I'm here. Let's battle. Another fastball. Or do you throw the big two playing breaking ball. Oh, man. We got to go with a high heater. Popped up right side. Very shallow right field. Racing back over the oh, shoulder. Wow. Makes the play. Outstanding job. That's Eddie's on. Wow. Well, I was out in trouble land out there. It's nice. Well, play. That was scary, dude. That maybe ties the game if it drops in. Look at Eddie Zahn. Boston Kellner. The tying run is out there at second base. The grit and guts of Coy James. Fights it off. 0-1 the count. Coy out of advance, North Carolina. Take a look at the lead Dean Moss is getting out at second base. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Dean representing, as we were talking about, that tying run. He's getting a massive running secondary lead. He's, he's not 180 he's, feet away. He's yes, about 130 he's feet away. He's going to score on a hit. To the right side on the line. That will do it. And the E-Squad wins it. The 14U Perfect Game Select Festival in the year 2021 goes to the East Squad. And what a job locking it down in the ninth inning by the versatile Coy James. Yeah, what a great game. I didn't expect to have a low scoring game at all with the quality of bats in this, but this this uh, game really showed out the, the, the hitting talent, the athletic talent, and, and the talent on the mound at all. And especially it showed out what great young players, what enthusiastic players these are. Yeah, it definitely showed to me, you know, these kids, it's, as far as their, you know, their speed, uh, the arms out on the mound, um, guys hitting, it was a well-rounded game. And then that, and that'll do it. Jacob Kendall, and then it was on. Nice job of the West squad fighting back. Boy, they gave him a scare, D. Oh, yeah, that was a fun ending. I thought they had it. I thought they had the momentum going there and everything like that and just a couple good defensive yes. plays. That's not an easy play for the right fielder out there, but was on with the play before. They put it together and ended the game, though. Yes, they pulled it out. Charles, the future of the game. Is it in good hands as you spent the week with these young men? I should believe it is. Um, I'm liking the spirit of these young kids. I mean, these kids are uh, well mature. Um, uh, they're playing the game the right way. They're playing the game very excited. And I just can't, I can't wait to keep following these young kids and um, to see how they progress over the years. David, it looks as if, much like other classes, the year 2020 by these young men was not wasted during a pandemic. They're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster, they're more physical. They took advantage of the shutdown. Oh, they did. They, 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 they Not only did they get stronger, I think you... You get time off to think about the game. It reminds you how much you enjoy the game when you don't get a chance to play. And that's one thing, as you mentioned, Charles, that's so obvious with these kids, seeing them in the hotel, seeing them on the practice field, seeing them all through the last three days. These kids love the game of baseball. What a spectacular event this was, and we're certainly glad that you spent all this time with us. The future of the game at Perfect Games 14U Select Festival here in beautiful Fort Myers, Florida. 8-6, to six, the East wins it. Thank you to all of you for taking a part of this and enjoying the time of the future of the game.
Our entire broadcast team, Marty Tara, producer, director, our coordinating producer, Steve Banta, outstanding stuff. Charles Johnson, amazing. Great insights from you, David Ronsley, your wisdom, your scouting insights as well. Always welcome. Danny Wexham, and no one speaks to amateur baseball better than Danny Wexham. My name is Darren Sutton. On behalf of our entire broadcast team, with Perfect Game and Perfect Game TV, we'll see you soon at the ballpark. Have a good one, everyone. Thanking Darren, am I tossing it back to Darren? Just you for, for a perfect game? Sure. I have the MVP of the game here with me, Omar Cerna, who just got a well-deserved Gatorade bath. Omar, two for three today. You almost hit one out off the monster. How good did that bath feel, and how much fun did you have today? Uh, it was really fun. Um, just got a curveball, um, waist high, just hit it, and uh, had a lot of fun with them. Uh, a lot of hype and excitement, and then, I don't know, just had fun. You had a lot of fun, and behind the plate, you caught a couple of innings. You threw a guy out. How impressive are the arms here at the 14U Select Fest? Really impressive. I got to hit against Connor Griffin and throwing, throwing pretty fast, and uh, I'm going to hit off of him one day, but that was fun. I have no doubt you'd do that. And most importantly, though, throughout all of this is the money raised for PG Cares and as well for children with pediatric cancer. Almost half a million between all the Select Fest. Yours raised almost $131,000, a little more than. What kind of impact? I know you met some of the buddies. What kind of impact has this experience had on you? Um, made me realize I appreciate things more and uh, just enjoy every day and be grateful for what you have and uh, just work hard every day. Omar, congratulations. Thank you. Guys?